Okay, just a moment. I'm sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. So that's the reason why your name appears to be so many on the list. Please, can you see the screen? Yes, please, Mr. Marco. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. And welcome to the first session of the webinar series, the GRASAC webinar series. Uh, my name, as you can see on the screen, is Eric Amponsa Mwafo. I work with the university library system stationed at the ESA Rips library. Okay, so today we are going to look at how to conduct literature search and also touch on uh, some basic things that we can engage in to avoid plagiarism. Now the essence for this is that most often some of us uh, during enrollment uh, uh, for the sake of work or family or for some reasons we are unable to attend the general orientation that is uh, done or organized for students. So we are doing this to ensure that at least everybody has a fair idea of where to get resources and what is available to aid you in your research and project work. Because sometimes you may be engaged in the work, you don't know where to find relevant resources, and most of us end up at Scholar, in which case, if you find that you're unable to get the relevant or some needed materials, then you are stuck. In this day, especially where a lot of the work is uh, to be done uh, at our chosen location, whether at home or even at the workplace, it means that every single resource that we need to complete our project work and assignment has to be on our fingertips or we should be able to reach them, especially electronically. Okay, so the session is divided into three segments. We are going to look at introduction to UGLS resources that investor of Ghana library systems resources that are available for teaching and learning. And then we will engage a few of the resources to see how we can conduct literature search to find materials to complete our project work and assignments and also touch on some of the basic skills that we need and awareness to avoid plagiarism, which uh, become more apparent, especially by the time you finish your thesis as graduate students. Okay, so basically at this stage, we are looking at some of the resources that the university has made available, KETSI, or uh, through the University of Ghana Library System. And Firstly, we are going to look especially at the spaces that are available. We do this, so these are some of the major libraries in the university. So the, the parent is BAM Library. And then we have what we know as the satellite libraries. So satellite libraries comprise the whole libraries, departmental libraries, school libraries, um, Kolebu, Accra City Campus, every single library, no matter the location that belongs to the University of Ghana forms part of the satellite library. And together, they are all referred to as the University of Ghana Library System. 
we do this in order that some of us who don't come to campus often, you know where at least you can get some materials if it so happened that you need especially a hard copy of one. So the opening hours for the libraries vary. So depending on which library you visit, especially the closing. So, but basically uh, by 8.39, every library is supposed to open, except for this period of COVID. Sometimes there are a few arrangements, but most of the libraries still open at 8.30. It's only the closing time, but I know BAM Library is doing night now, and then a lot of the libraries close at five. At RIPS, we try to at least close at eight, in which case we realize most students may have left. Okay, so these are some of the spaces. When I talk of spaces, we are talking of areas that you can sit if you need to hide away from family and friends or distraction. So areas that you can find in the university that are demarcated for studies. Uh, these are very important because uh, sometimes when you are very busy and you are pressed with time, you hope that you run away from family and friends to be able to concentrate. So I will hope that we pay attention to these locations so that when that becomes the case, you are able to find yourself a place to sit and then complete a project, especially at the final stages of your thesis. So we have um, the research commons, 24 hour reading room, the Korea, or Ghana Korea ICT lab, all called the IAC. And we also have the Braille Library for uh, the physically challenged. And then we also have the thesis room. So those who may not have been to the research commons, so this is uh, an image of the research commons. The research commons is uh, designated only for graduate students from MA to PhD. So we hope that if you happen to want to go to study there, please do not carry friends who are not UG uh, students and also don't take your undergraduate friends or relatives to the place. The idea is that anytime a graduate student enters the place, there is supposed to be a seat for him or her to use for as long as they need it. And if the place is full, the assumption is that then most students are busy being graduate students. So please, let's adhere to that. The, the research commons is inside the BAM library. So when you go to BAM library and you ask, of the research commons you'll be directed. So these are some of the reading carrels. So there are pieces in there that you can use. We also have tables, as you see on the screen, that if you have your laptop, there is internet connection there. We also have dedicated staff there to support you if you need something or if you uh, have a challenge with probably internet or downloading an article or any other thing that uh, is related to your research. These are also uh, the research, the discussion rooms. We also have discussion rooms at the research commons that you can go and use for your studies. So if you have a situation where you need to discuss with some colleagues, you go in there and then book a session to spend. It's normally three hours, but uh, due to COVID, most people don't go there. So I believe the rule may be relaxed if you happen to need longer. Uh, periods. So this is this, this, uh, one of the rooms. There is a big one that's able to take about 12 people, but due to COVID, it means that we need to have it. So if you are putting a group together, please be aware and know the number. The largest one in there is only one. It takes 12 people. And for now, it means that you can only take six people. So this is also another reading area, which is known as a West Stack reading area. It's normally at the left side. When you enter the main entrance of BAM Library, this is also one of the reading areas. There are lots of seats there. We're doing this in order that if at some point you need a place. There was one evening when I was closing and then one PhD candidate came around and this was around eight something and probably he just needed about 30 minutes sitting time so i had to take him to the 24-hour reading room to spend that time there so it's important that you know these spaces you never know when your own home becomes crowded your office cannot contain you and your friends may become a distraction then you need a place to hide so please take note so this is a 24-hour reading room you enter the 24-hour reading room from outside so that's um, in between, the entrance is in between 
chemistry and physics. So you enter from outside, so it's never closed. We have security men, West of Ghana security men, the home and the place. So you go there and then do what you may. There is internet there also, so you carry your own things there. Place that the place is only for University of Ghana students. When you go, the security man will verify. So please don't introduce outsiders there. <coughs> this is also what is known as a thesis room. This uh, section in BAM Library where we have some, especially some of the old theses <coughs> that are not online yet. So if you happen to want one of them for some trend analysis or something, when you go there, you'll be sent to the room. You work there when. You are done, then you take your leave. So thesis room in BAM library. And those who also offering Arabic, this there's Arabic library also in BAM library. So if you didn't know, this is Arab, Arabic library, you go to BAM library. It's very close to the entrance. So you'll be introduced to the place. And then this is also the UN library. In here, you have resources of the United Nations and World Bank. So if your research work borders on especially less yard, uh, he said rapes and all those the, um, migration and all those students who normally will have need for resources on international uh, education or some training or research place. You go to the UN library in BAM library, you find some help in there. And then there's a reference hall. So if you didn't carry your laptop or your phone is more function and you need to search to find if there is some material available, the reference hall. So this is almost like the reception in BAM library. If you enter the entrance straight uh, through the entrance, you go straight in there and then you talk to the staff, they'll help you. So this is another um, image at the, at, the, at the reference hall. You can see, I think that's the university library and, and the middle there. So this is also IAC computer lab. So this is the uh, Ghana Korea ICT lab. This lab actually is allowed for everybody, every Ghanaian or anybody in Ghana, but it's hosted in the BAM library. So it was sponsored by the Korean government for the government of Ghana, hosted by the University of Ghana inside BAM library. But so when you go there, they demand that you show an ID card, any national ID card, be it your student or national ID card, you can show and then go and use it. So they have some pieces there. There are also spaces that you can use your laptop. There's internet there. There are staff there to support you. And this is also the instruction lab of the IAC or the Ghana Korea ICT lab. So if assuming this training is supposed to be in person in groups, then Grasa could have uh, gone there to book the space. So that, that space is uh, reserved for training and instruction. Borrowing rights of graduate students. So please take note of what's on the screen. Uh, you can borrow six books if you happen to need some hard copies. Borrow six books for two weeks. You can renew them once, and then the books will be recalled, meaning that the library has you to bring them back. A failure to return uh, on or before the due date is two CDs per day, up to seven days. So please take note. So it means that for the first week, you pay two CDs every day. Thereafter, so after the first week, it's, it increases to five CDs a day. And if you lose the material, um, you're going to pay the current price of the book plus shipping and handling charges and a processing fee of 100 CDs. So please take note and be aware that if this should be the case or if you fall prey to this, um, you will have to redeem yourself before you can graduate because the library normally send lists of defaulters to the academic affairs and graduate school. So if that becomes the case, please be sure that you go there quickly to redeem yourself because this can delay your graduation. When you be sitting at home thinking that your name is on the graduation list, that probably may not be the case. So please be aware and return materials when you are done with them and on time. So these are some of the resources. So the resources are in print materials. Resources here, I mean the books and journals. So they are in print books and then electronic books and journal uh, databases. So we we'll do this practically. So the general the uh, e-books, we have Science RD books, ProQuest, EGA online, and then JP Digital. We we'll do this practically. And then we have general databases, which we'll be looking at later. And then we also have the institutional repository. So we we'll look at this. 
uh, all of this later practically from the website. The investor also subscribes to reference managers, uh, Mendeley, which we'll be looking at, I think, in the third session of this webinar series. Mendeley and EndNote, and then also you have links to the 1018 anti-plagiarism uh, package to use to test your work, which we're also going to look at. Now, these are some of the services you can get from the VAM library besides the normal um, book lending and reference service. So you have lending, you have photocopies, you have book binding. And uh, the last time I think I saw some uh, theses that were bound and I realized they didn't follow the color code of the university. Please be sure you do, you bind your thesis right, send it to the right places, go to BAM. They know the color codes and whether it be it uh, an MPhil, an MA, PhD, they know the color code. So when you take it there, they'll do the right thing for you. And then there's also scanning at the research commons and then the uh, knowledge commons in BAM library. So if at some point you need to scan some documents and you are close to the place, please go there. We also have article requests, which we also look at from the website. So article requests basically uh, is a service that enables you, a student of the university, to be able to request for some articles that may not be part of the database that we subscribe to. Now, this service people hardly uh, go in for because mostly you get enough resources to complete your project. But if you should have or find some particular article that is not part of the general databases that the university subscribes to, and you think you need it, you use article request to apply, and then the university through the library will buy it and send to you. So we look at that. Um, they also have live chats. We look at this uh, subject librarian's uh, orientation. So the library also periodically runs orientation. So please encourage your colleagues when you see the adverts to join so that you're always aware of what's available so you don't struggle through your project work. And then the off-campus access, which we also look at uh, practically from the website. And then there are also these special spaces for the students with special needs. And so we have the Braille um, handouts at the Braille library and BAM library, magnifier and and BOSA and some, we have staff there to support them. So if in your department, you have some students who have special needs, please help us introduce them there to get the necessary help to also be able to complete their project work. So the library is inside BAM library. They have an ICT lab there, and then they also have the special Braille collection. Yeah. So we look at this, uh, the online catalog, the databases, all this we'll look at practically online. Now the reason you should, instead of browsing the open web to consult and use the investors subscribed database and these books, is that we're saying these are authentic because normally you have expert go through and select these materials for research, teaching and learning. And then you have full text, means the investor has paid for them, taxi or school fees, so you can always get the full source content to full source content to use. They're also multidisciplinary, meaning that a lot of them, uh, regardless of your topic area or field of study, you can always get content to study. And they are always also very current. So if you need current resources to complete a project, you can also do the same. And we also have others that offer you uh, some have built older content for trend analysis if that becomes the case for you. So these are some of the materials of the Sage, Sage Research Method Online, which sometimes gives you, which gives you some techniques on how to conduct research, literature review and all that, annual review, scope. So we look at all this. Um, okay, so these are the web pages. This is the a catalog which helps you to search for physical books to be sure they are available and which library they are in. And then this also the page, the web page, uh, screenshots of the e-resources uh, website, which we'll be visiting pretty shortly. Now, so it's when you're entering our libraries, we encourage that you observe uh, COVID protocols in BAM library, you know, they have the scanner there and there's a security person there. So please, there's no excuse, especially 
that they forget your nose mask and all that they will not allow you to enter so please don't travel down unprepared only uh, to be turned away all right so there's a staff this bam library entrance you're seeing the staff there they will normally ask you for your id because of the numbers bam library is almost running at half its uh, user population so we like to be sure that those entering qualify to enter you should be a staff or a student so they normally ask you to identify and then also fill a form for uh, tracing contact tracing so these are also uh, the bag systems in bam library so if you go there and they normally will not allow you to take your bag in there for the sake of theft and because the place is also very big so when you go there these are lockers at the entrance, you the keys are always on it. So you put your, your bag in there, remove your laptop and other content that you need for your studies. And then you lock it and take the key with you inside. When you are leaving, whether you're going on break or whatever, you take your content and put the key back so that the next person can also uh, use it. If you forget and take the key away and you misplace it, you normally pay for the replacement. So please be aware. Now expectations as your information resource provider that make the UGLS your home, organize as a group and request training as GRASAC has done. For some, uh, sometimes you meet some students, they say, oh, well, our department, we have not done this. We need Mendeley, we need that. Please contact your research coordinators or if it's your class rep, and then uh, put a request to the e-resource librarian in BAM library, and then the session will be organized for you. It makes your research work and assignment completion easier because you know where to get materials, you don't struggle, and also takes the stress off your referencing and other things that you need to do before you submit a project or an assignment. Activate your UG email. This is very important. A lot of information, including uh, sponsorship and other things are sent into our email. The UG email also comes with a cloud storage, what is known as the, the, the Google Drive, which you can use to back up your data. There are many instances where people are almost finishing their work, that's when disaster strikes. And then you may probably lose uh, some files or even your project work. How do you recover? So please uh, make use of your UG mail. All your student emails are Gmails. So you have unlimited storage space in there for storage so please if you are not using it activate it periodically log in look at the messages that the university is sending to you some may be beneficial use your okay if you need to sign to your resources use short videos the age is also library is providing short videos that you can also use for short short uh, skills that you may need get to know the contact of your subject library and so Senior library officers are assigned to various schools and departments as subject librarians. So the duty is to support you when you need help, when you need training, they can contact them to organize it for you. So please uh, contact your department library and get to know your subject librarian, get their contact so that if you need help, you can always get to them. Some of you may get, uh, maybe as I'm with you now, you get to have my contact but then I am going to be with you for about two hours, which means that if you are busy, if I happen to be doing the same to another group and you have a need, at that time that I'm doing a presentation like this, which I do very often, when you call, I won't be able to pick. And then you also probably be hard pressed with time. So please get to know other subject librarians so that if that becomes the case, at least you have more than one person to depend on. And then also use the off-campus service, especially in this era of COVID. Okay, so this is the contact of the e-resource librarian, Dr. Olive Aja. So she's in charge of electronic resources in the University of Ghana Library System. Her office is in BAM Library. She's actually in charge of the research commons, the faculty commons and the knowledge commons. So if you need to contact her for some support or if you're trying to reach me and you can't please you can reach out to her and that's my contact also down there so if you need to contact me please feel free only that if i'm happen to engage in a session like this i won't be able to pick your call so you can either email or send a whatsapp normally 
I like to check the WhatsApp only when I'm ready to work on it. So when you send and I have not uh, looked at it, don't be worried. Probably because I'm busy and not uh, ready to work on it yet. Because it, by the time I look at it, I always like to be sure that when I click on it and maybe you are asking for some support, I have the time to answer it immediately. So if you happen to send a WhatsApp and you don't see me checking immediately, ask. I am with you now, then you should know that. Okay, so that's the end. So that you'll be able to sit quietly away from friends and family and distraction to be able to complete your work. Uh, any questions? I can take a few questions if there is any before we continue, else we can continue and take or at the end. Thank you. Well, the moderator is, do we have some questions in the chat room? Let me see here. Okay, so somebody's asking if you're going to get a slide. Yeah, so Brasak is recording, so they'll share the recording with you. Okay, someone is asking how can you get access to turn it in? So we'll look at that. That'll be the last part of the session. Um, I'm sure if you have your ID numbers, your ID card, uh, as a graduate student, may not matter that much. But if you had your, you have a copy of your, please uh, have a photocopy of your admission letter with you, and also be sure you have your ID number in mind. Sometimes it becomes necessary to verify because we have had instances where I personally turned away some people from the research commons, even though they were past students, they were not supposed to come. There's some light that they were still students only for us to verify from our system and realize they were lying. So please, have, if you don't have your ID, try and have a photocopy of your admission letter with you. That uh, will suffice. Okay, so how do I assess e-resources of campus? So we're also going to look at that, so we sort that out. Okay, so I take it these are the questions for now. Thank you. Okay, so the second session is conducting literature search. So this session we're going to do practically, I'm going to take us to the e-resource page and then we'll look at them practically so that you have a feel of how you can go around it. So let me hit the web page. Okay, so this is the the library's resource web page where you find almost every relevant service available here. So what we are going to do is that we're going to quickly go through them one after the other, all the resource tabs on the web page. So the site is bam.ug.edu.gh if you need to take note. Okay. So the first tab is the UG card. So UG card stands for University of Ghana Online Catalog. Uh, the online catalog basically hosts a listing of, so let me open that in a new tab. It takes a listing of the, okay, let me I select this so we don't have too many. It takes, a list of all the hard copy materials. So please take note. 
The UG card only helps you to access hard copy materials, not that you have a soft copy of them, but in order that you are able to tell if a particular book that probably may have been recommended for you is available, and if it's available, which library um, in the University of Ghana library system can you locate it? All right, sometimes you may have to, it doesn't make sense, in fact, traveling from home or from the workplace or even from your department or hostel to BAM library or to the RIPS or ESL library only to be told that the material is at the business school library close to UPSA. So when you use this system, you are able to tell, first of all, if the material is available and if it's available, where exactly you can find it. So that's the Invest of Ghana online catalog for you. So let me, for instance, search for biology of vertebrates, just for the sake of time. Now to search, first of all, you need to know which data item you have or the search term you are using. Is it a keyword? Is it, is it a keyword that you have created? Or is it a title of the actual book that you have? So if you are looking for a book in some area of this particular subject, then you choose keyword or subjects, all right? But if you have the title itself, please be sure to select the title. And then if you know the author name or if you are searching by the author's name, please choose um, the author. And then the call number. So the call numbers, if you've been taking books from the library, you realize that there are some special numbers that are attached to the spine of the book. So those are the serial numbers, they're not serial numbers, these are unique numbers that are generated to serve as identifiers for the book, which enables us to be able to trace the book inside of the library, uh, not just the library, but also the shelf on which the book can be located. So these are basically the search terms. Now, sometimes a lecturer can place a reserve on some course, either by the course name or by the lecturer's name. So if, if probably your lecturer says, I have placed uh, some book on reserve for you to go and consult, then you can go to search. So in that case, how did the lecturer place uh, the reservation? Was the reservation done by the course title? And then you search by reserve, uh, reserve by course. If the lecturer did that by his name, then you have to search by the lecturer's name. So for here, I will assume that this is uh, a keyword. So then you click on search, but before then, we also have, if you want to know if the material is in a specific library, then you pop this arrow down and search. But for now, we will leave it at search, uh, view entire collection, and then I click on search. So as I said, this is for physical or manual books, okay, that are on the shelves in the library. So biology of the invertebrates. So this is the book. So once you locate it like this, it's a very simple, easy to use uh, application or web page. So once you find it like this, you first of all look at, so if you look at this, there's location. All right, now the location says BAM library. So it tells you that the book, you can find it in BAM library. So if you are traveling down here, you are sure that you are driving straight away to BAM library. Now to get proper assistance from the library staff when you get in there, Please take note of the call number. As I said, the call number tells you which part of the library, you know BAM library is very big, which part of BAM library the book is, and also on which shelf it can be located. So please you take note, after you take note of the title and probably the author, please, the most important thing is the call number. Even without the title, the call number can help the librarian to help you with the book. So that's, that's basically, um, how to use this system. You can also create a library account, which I will merge when we get to the off-campus account. So I will suspend this here for now, and then we'll move on to the next step. So this is the off-campus. So just for the purpose of testing, uh, if we go back and you need to search by the reserve, let's say by lecturer, so I select reserved by lecturer. I'm assuming that the lecturer has reserved some materials. So when you can, you can see some lecturers here. So you have uh, Tuguba Raymond, uh, that's I think uh, at the law library. You have uh, 
this professor Bedu, uh, that's information studies. Those are the ones I know. Yeah. So you can see some the names of some lecturers in there. So you look for if your lecturer says I have reserved some materials for you to go and consult, they said by their name. When you find it, you click on it. So if I should click on this, for instance, since it's in my field, so you can see that he teaches uh, automation of information systems, techniques of research in information, and then theory of knowledge of classification. So if these are the materials that are reserved, then you click on the one. So if I click on automation, you can see that these are the books that he has uh, asked for the student to go and consult. So meaning that when you get to BAM library, you ask for these materials, and then it makes it easier for you to search and find. Thank you. Okay, so the next tab is the UG space. Now the UG space is the University of Ghana repository. And the repository, uh, the repository hosts information resources that are generated or that were generated by the University of Ghana, in which case we were by students and staff and the university management. Okay, so you have book chapters written by lecturers and maybe students, conference reception, heritage materials, uh, Institute of African Studies, J.H. Uh, in archives. Okay, so if you need resources that are channeled in here, you visit this page. So, for so if you look at journals, so all the journals in here are journals published by uh, University of Ghana lecturers and maybe students. So what it means is that in order to search thoroughly, maybe you are searching for a particular lecturer's article and you are not you are unable to locate it. You can also come here. Sometimes uh, you can't explain, but there are instances you visit a particular database, you search for some item you are unable to find. You go to another source to search for it, and then it leads you to it. So please don't be tired. I get there are instances people search for material, they don't find it. When they ask for help and you are able to locate, uh, the question is, I've been trying this for weeks. How are you able to do it within uh, these few uh, minutes? The idea is that we don't stop clicking, all right? So you change, you search here, you don't get it. You go here, you search there, you change here, and then one resource will lead you to the material. So the example I'll use here is the thesis resources. So currently there are 6,336 uh, theses digitized. So if we should go there, uh, and the, you can have the source content, all right? So you have them grouped into doctora and masters. So if I go to doctora, you have 571 masters, BNMA and uh, MPhil, you have about 5,000. So you have them also in the colleges, okay? So you browse for your college and then uh, or you can straight away search, all right? So if I search for something on, uh, let me see, mechanical engineering, I wonder, but let me see. Of course, we have engineering students. Okay, so workplace safety and accidents among artisans at Kukumpi. So assuming this is the thesis I want to look at as an engineering student, uh, impact of corrective feedback, all I do is click on it and then you can, so if you scroll down, it says view. You can actually download it as part of your resources, just like the way you download articles. All right, so you can see it has downloaded onto my system. So this is it. So if I go to show in folder, you're going to see the article. It is downloaded. You can actually open it and use it. So please, if you need some thesis to guide this is your this should be your first stop and if you don't get what you want before you travel down if you so that is the space for you now i'll skip this for later and then we come to Electronic books, so this and that we'll be using for the, the literature search. So I'll go on to them now. And then they ask a librarian. So ask a librarian. Please, Mr. Host, can you mute the mic? Okay. okay, so ask, ask a librarian is a chat system that the library uses to uh, respond to your queries. As I mentioned, in my 
So you may have my contact, you need support, you're trying to reach me, and I'm here on this seminar with you. So what it means is that if anyone else who is not on this seminar is trying to reach me, as long as the seminar progresses, the person will not be going to be able to get me. So in that case, please use the chat system to send a message to the library. There are senior members that have been assigned to respond to it. If you get in there and there's no one online, normally you get somebody to meet you live. If you don't meet anyone to chat live, please leave your comment. We have staff who will check later and send feedback to your email. So that's the uh, Ask a Librarian or live chat for you. And then we also have the past exam questions. I thought my student didn't like past questions until some people proved me wrong. So I'm told some past questions have been graduate level, past questions have been um, scanned and uploaded. So to be able to access it, please, you need to register. So to register, I say register for full access to past questions. So you click on it and then you register. I think it takes uh, 24 hours, your account will be activated. So please pay attention. After you provide these details and submit, pay attention to the information here. It says that after the successful submission, you can access the past exam papers PDF using student ID as username and your library account barcode as password. Now, this is what they mean by barcode. So your student ID and your date of birth. We'll be looking at this when we, uh, we go to the off-campus account. So bear with me. So after your successful submission, it says that you can log in later when your account is active um, with your student ID and then your barcode. So your barcode comprises of your student ID plus your date of birth. We'll break it down. So you say your date of birth, two digits of the day. So if you're born on the eight, it's not going to be eight. It's going to be um, one five, one uh, zero eight, and then um, one five. Okay, if you're born uh, so this is the month. If you are born on October, it's going to be OCT, June like that, and then the full year. So it's going to come out something like this. So from here up to here is a student ID. And then this is the day of birth. This is the month of birth, and then the year in full. That becomes your barcode. So that's what you use to log in. So your student ID as your username and your barcode as your password after you sign off for the past question system. Okay. Then let me touch on the article request. As I mentioned, the article request enables you to be able to ask for articles that you try sourcing but was unable to get. So what happens is that the uh, University of Ghana, for instance, subscribes to Science Direct, which is, um, if not the largest, one of the largest databases uh, in academia. Now, you may search for a particular article, and then it may be there, but the system will still ask you to pay for it. Now, in that case, you use this to uh, apply for the article. Now, before you do that, if you are not using University of Ghana internet, there isn't what you pay for everything. That's not what we mean. So we'll come back to that. If you have logged in and the system is asking you to pay for it, then look for another article that is equally useful. Or if you think that particular article is so relevant, you need it to work with, then you use this form to apply. So you enter your own details up here, and then the details of the articles are down here, please. It is one article at a time. So you can't, for instance, copy and paste two titles of titles of two articles in here. No, it has to be one article at a time. Then you submit. So that's the article request for you. Now, if you come up here, it says that this service is only available to current University of Ghana students, faculty and staff. Please make sure you have searched all relevant databases that the University of Ghana subscribes to before requesting for an article. An A to Z list, okay, I've been provided. So please, let's not waste, uh, the investor has made funds available to do this, let's not waste it. Normally when you apply, there's 
a team in the research common staff among the research common staff who will look at it so please be sure that truly the system or the file or the document article is not part of what the investor subscribes to before you apply for it okay now you can be certain of that if you are sure that you have signed in okay and then so this also leads you to the room reservation at the research commons so the discussion rooms that i showed you the image of in the research commons so if you need to go there i think because of COVID, the the interface is inactive so these are the rooms available there you book and then you go and use so if at some point you go there and they ask you to book what you do is that you come to the system and they use it to book the idea was that we didn't want um, people clashing in there. So assuming I want to book and I choose, click on 11 and 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., the system will block this space and no one else can use it. But I think because of COVID now, it's, it's, it's been deactivated because many people don't uh, go there anyway. Okay. And then the we also have the research guides. So the research guides are like um, miniaturized form of the of the databases that we have. Okay, so these are like specialized web pages that are created by extracting related content from the databases and ebooks that we have and made available. So what it means is that. Um, so if I should choose um, nursing, so if I go to public health, for instance, uh, public health, so this is, uh, there's a new uh, librarian in charge, I think there's an old person. So the, the officer in charge is assigned to extract relevant content from the investing subscriptions, the ebooks, the general databases, conferences, uh, useful links, okay? for you. So what it means is that it reduces the task that you would have gone through looking for materials because the officer has already um, gone through uh, to some extent the resources and extracted useful ones and useful links for you. So you can also start your search from here because when it comes to UG titles, these are the relevant books that the author thought were useful for you so that when you come here you browse through and then you can you can use them okay so newspaper review uh, so depending on the department or the subject librarian you have the content but mostly the idea is to extract from the resources available in the university the ones that are related to particular departments so these are content related to public health so if you are a student with public health you can start your search from here since it's been made a bit easier for you Okay, so next stage, let's go to off-campus access, which I believe is one of the very important resources in this COVID era, since we don't get to travel too much too. So the off-campus access is a service that enables you as a staff or student of the University of Ghana to be able to log in when you are not using the university's internet. So what happens is that the resources or the provided of the resources, Science Direct, JSTOR, Emerald Insight, and all the rest, what they do is that the resources they provide, when the university pays for it, they tag the resources or access to the resources to our IP address range. So meaning that for them to be able to know if you are from UG, they check the IP address that is trying to source for the information. And if it doesn't belong to UG, they will not grant you access. And that's the situation where you find that when you search and the search results come, then on the interface, you see written there, say, purchase, 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 purchase. What it means is that the system or the resources are not part of what the university uh, subscribes to, or that you specially have not logged in. And I'm saying that it applies to when you have not signed in or when you are not using the investors' internet, okay? So when you are not using the investors' internet, so, so right now I am sitting at the RIPS conference room, 
now if i am not logged in if i were not using the investors internet i think i am not what it means is that i need to sign in so it doesn't matter if you are or you are on campus or not once you are not using the investors internet source it is per the systems configuration consider that you are off campus so in that case you need to sign in to be able to get access so please take note when you are probably in your department and you are using the investors internet you don't need to sign in but when you switch to your own data probably because the investor internet is not working or that there is not fast enough for you then you sign it because i was afraid i may get breaking and all that i logged into my self line just so i am certain that i will have a smooth presentation okay so that's the off-campus access for you so please let's look at the steps involved in the registration so once you click on off campus you are taken to this interface so from here it says student so please we are going through the steps to register a student without my library account are obliged to create one to access the system to register so you click on this link so from the home page of campus and then once you get here you click on this link if you already if you have already registered then you can straight away click on uh, login from here but we, i'm assuming that we are all yet to register so then you click here to register and then from this interface this is where you create your barcode if you have not done so yet and as i mentioned earlier your barcode comprises of your student id and your date of birth and it's the same barcode that you use once you created that you use to sign into the past questions system so in here you are going to enter your details like this so if this is mine so you have the staff id you have the day of birth you have the month of birth you have the year of birth all right and then you can do that so if you enter then it being the first time once you enter it here then please click if it's a, you are not creating the barcode if you already done it and you are logging into this system then you enter the password in which case in which case you may have already created the password if that's not the case please you can then after you enter your barcode excuse me so you enter your barcode which is your student id your day of birth first two digits your month of birth first three uh, alphabet and then the year of birth in full once you do that if you are not creating the account then click on submit all right because i've already done that i don't think i'll be allowed and also being a staff so once you click on it the system is not going to provide you with the spaces to create a password and confirm all right so you enter your barcode and then to your barcode being your student id plus your date of birth and then you click on submit that's for the first time then the system will now ask you to create a password and be able to log in once you do that the system will straight away log you into the it will log you into this system which is the ug online catalog okay but then that's not your intent so then you come back to this page and now you can click to log in so right from the off campus access page you create your account and then once you are done you come here having created your barcode and a password then you come here to click on login then you can sign in. so from here so you can see that says enter email slash barcode so for staff those who are staff online you can use your staff you use your staff email to log in if you're a student you use your barcode so please take note so i'm going to uh, enter my email so this is my staff email and then i enter my password um in my password recently uh, there's a moment please don't also forget to choose your status don't forget to choose your status because if you enter as a student 
and the status is on staff when you send the file you won't be able to get to the right or the intended destination so please be sure you choose your status when you enter the details before you click on sign in just a moment please Uh, so staff, can someone remind me of my password? Seems to be struggling. Okay, hope it's correct. Yeah, so once you enter your details correctly, you choose your status. So you have all the general databases presented to you. Now we call this databases because they contain a lot. Okay, so each one of what we have on the screen contains so many journals. And we all know that in a journal, you contain journal articles. So even one, um, edition of a journal contains something about 20, 30, 40 articles. So that's what we are looking at. So every database, as you see here, contains a lot of uh, journals. So if it's Emerald, Emerald Insider I want to use, so I normally advocate that you right click on the one you intend to search from and then click on open in a new tab, just so you have the home tab open. Okay, so at this stage, I take it that we are zooming in gradually into the literature search. Um, so it's giving me internet error. Okay, let me choose another one. Um, and go to Science Direct. Okay, so then it takes you to the interface. Then you can use. So once you get here, it means once you got here through signing in, it means that your access is granted by uh, through the investor of Ghana. Now, those of you who are already using uh, Mendeley, Mendeley is also owned by Elsevier, who owns Science Direct. So you can use the same credentials your Mendeley sign in. Uh, details to log in to Science Direct. So even for Science Direct, if you don't log in by off campus and you go straight away, you can also sign in using your Mendeley account. So for instance, if I click on sign in, um, it may sign me automatically. Oh yes, so then I can enter my password. So Elsevier owns signs already, they own Scopus, they own Mendeley. So once you have an account with Mendeley, you can, so you can see that my name is here. So once you're signing like this and it is your institutional email, you can always search even without you signing via off campus. So that's, that's off campus uh, access. Um, because this is very relevant due to uh, COVID, I would like to take some questions on the off campus before, before we get into the uh, section. So please, if you have a question, you can unmute and ask. If you have some challenges, there are areas that I need to retouch or rehash, please uh, let me know. Hello. Okay, so. I can't hear anything. So coordinator, please sort that out. Let me get some highs, just so I know you are there. It's so quiet. Oh, Hello. Yes, we are here. Yeah. Okay, good. So if there's anyone online or if you have a challenge with the off 
campus account so far please you can omit and ask otherwise we continue okay so this i think we have addressed uh, how do i access ebooks okay we'll look at that outside so we use the off campus so to access ebooks to use the off campus uh, process what's the off campus resource that we have answered that's a the article request service come with a fee no it doesn't come with a fee the university the university uh, takes care of that so you don't pay for the off-campus service the university takes care of that which is why you need to be sure that what you are requesting truly is not within the many articles that the university has already spent money to acquire how do i activate the off-campus okay so we have answered and how do we check for plagiarism that we are yet to come to how the, uh, do i access then if we are yet to come to uh, please after you are done with your course what is the condition for you to access the off offline library um please when after your program or after your studentship duration uh, normally i think it takes about three months to yeah almost about but for the e-resources normally you are cut off immediately so if you happen to if for some reason you defer or you travel and you went to extension you need to send your extension letter to the e resource library the research commons and then they will check and contact the academic computing unit to reactivate your account so once you finish school then once the semester um, ends and vacation you are cut off so that's that's about how long you can use it Due to COVID, some we students are unable to access all the library. We are unable to get our ID. So please have your a copy of your admission letter with you. Best can you assist us to overcome that challenge? Okay. So the question you can call me after, and then I can uh, probably discuss properly. Does the system recognize only the date of birth we submitted to them? Yes, of course. So if you submitted uh, what we call football age uh, during uh, the application for admission, know that the system will only respond to that. Now, the reason is that your data is already in the system. Your data has already been entered. So you are only entering a part of your bio data to match it, to gain, gain access to it. You are not actually, and so what, the moment you finish creating the account, you realize that when it locks you in, your name and everything is in there. Meanwhile, you didn't enter it. So know that your data is already in there. Oh, need date, but it can't be any, <laughs> it has to be yours. Um, just join, please. How do I get the barcode? Okay, so I believe you were in before. So the barcode. We'll look at it again please i did try to register to the ram library seven months earlier even after successful application bam library what do you mean please come again with this question i have tried several times is it the off-campus access is it the uh past questions please let, 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 let it be clear for me uh, please can you type the website address to the interface you are teaching okay i'll do that uh, please go through after setting off campus account uh, how do i recover your password there's password recovery so if you happen to forget your password when you register for off campus uh, mostly as i know they normally send you a feedback of your uh, credentials to your student email so if you forget go to a student email if you don't find it please use the forgotten password to do that but if you happen to be on campus please go to bam library and ask for the academic computing unit academic computing unit they will sort it out for you can i access project works using the off campus yes of course so you project works you go to the uh, repository okay with the ug space Please, can you kindly repeat the off-campus? Okay, I'll do that. The expiration date of off-campus, 31st July 2021, for final year, will it be changed? 
Uh, yes, if academic calendar is distorted, of course, it will always be upgraded. Please, what system is suitable for business students, especially finance? Uh, Emerald Insight, Science Direct, um, Scopus, JSTOR, the, and, and many of them, many of them. Now, when you go there, when I come to show you, when you go there, you realize that there are such of descriptors in front of them. So then it helps you to. If you are a student, you need to use your barcode. Okay. Um, please, is it a barcode or date? Uh, please, in this webinar, been recorded. Yes, yes. And trying to register, but after entering my barcode and submitting, not seeing anything. Okay, if it doesn't work for you, please, if you happen to be on campus, get to BAM Library, ask for the academic computing unit. And if you are also a sandwich student, or you have, the thing is, if your department has not submitted your details to UGCS, it means that your name may not be in the system. So please find out if that be the case, you sorted out. How do I activate my UG email address? Please check your admission letter to activate your UG email address. Okay, so just a brief rehash of the off campus because I see that to be very, very important. So once you are on the, you go to the BAM library webpage, which is bam.ug.edu.gh, I'll type in the um, chat room pretty soon. So once you are here, you click, I'm sorry, I have to keep my interface. So I open the interface like this, and then you click on this link to register if you don't have an account yet. So when you get here, I'm saying that you create a barcode, and I'm saying the barcode is made up of your <clears throat> student ID, your day of birth, the first two digits of, the, of your day of birth. So this, for instance, is wrong. All right, it can't be single digit. So your day of birth, first two digits, and then you enter your, yeah. So if you look at this, you have this being the student ID. This is the day of birth. So that's 6 June, um, yeah. So 6 August, sorry. And then the first three alphabets of the month of birth, then you enter the year. So once you do that, click on submit. Don't enter a password because you are not creating an account. Click on submit, and then the system will give you two more text boxes to create a password and confirm. That's it. Once you are done, then you come back here and click on to log in. So that's it. Uh, let me log out so I can show that interface again for the purpose of the questioner. Okay, so I click, come here and I click login. You, as a student, you enter your barcode, so the barcode that you just created, okay, which is the same thing that you use for the past question interface. So I, as a staff, I use my staff email. So staff use your staff email, student use your barcode. So I choose my staff email, and then I enter my password. And then you choose your status. Are you a student? Are you a staff? So I'm a staff, I choose staff, and I click on login. And then it will take you to the resources. Normally, because you're logging from off campus, the interface, you only get a listing of the database. This, this, this is so much. There's no way any student of you will complain that they didn't get resources to complete a project. This is so much. So as I was saying, you can see that this is, uh, bio one, and then it gives you a descriptor. I said biological, ecological, and environmental science, full text. Okay, so it tells you what they contain. So the one who was asking for business and finance, we so see MRA, so management, uh, library and information, management, engineering, you get all these things in there. So we, con we can consider finance to be part of uh, management. So science direct is also um, general. Okay, and then you have science direct ebooks. So 
that's that's basically it so you take your time to look at the descriptor so wiley and all that so you can focus on the ones that are not uh, science bias then so once you see multidisciplinary it means that they cover all spheres so science um humanities and all that social studies every field of study you can get information from it so you look at that okay so i will take it that we are okay with the off-campus access okay so now i'm going to the general databases with assumption that we are all on campus now so once I click on it, then you're going to have a list of the databases presented to you like this, and then you choose the one that you want to use. So you take a time to go through, look at the descriptors, and then you choose your file, the one that you want to uh, use. So, um, So if I should uh, just tease you with Sage Research Method. So it tries, to, it tries to give you some tips and resources on how to go about. So this Sage Research, research Method, Sage itself as a database is there. So when it comes, I want to uh, read classic and cartoon, watch uh, methods, and then you have understanding the foundations of research method listen to research method experts, uh, learn about research methodology in medicine, conduct research online. So you can come here, design a research project, practice data analysis, all right? So that's SIG research method. So you can later take your time, come in here, and then um, read or listen to some of the videos uh, about any of the fields that you think you have uh, need of or you need some skills in, the SIG research method. Okay, so, and also JSTOR, I normally like to touch on it for students who probably will have need of, so we can't do all of them, so I'm going to touch on a few and then we'll do some searching. Uh, those who have need of um, some older content, so it contains both new and older content in JSTOR. So once you hit the interface, please, the interfaces uh, differ a bit per their design but it's basically the same if you need to search so if i come here and i need something on uh, not covered um but let's say um small business financing all right then you click on search So the interfaces are basically similar. They only differ in arrangement. So you take your time and see what you want. So for JSTOR, when you search, so the small business financing, you see I have a direct hit on an article. So if this was what I was looking for, then for, for science that when we get there, you see, you see, realize that the download is down here, but for this one, download is here. So please look around the internet. Don't just search and see I couldn't get a place to download, no. So for this article, you click here to download. Now, am I allowed to download? Let's see. So you say accept. So for JSTOR, when you click to download, it will ask you to accept. It's not like that in other databases, but please, you want resources from JSTOR response to their command. So the article is open for me to download. So that's, that's basically. And I must say that please, when you are looking for content, vary your search term. That is the most important skill you need for searching. Vary also, I say small business financing. If I'm not getting anything, I go to business financing. I go to small business. The reason is that those who wrote the article, they choose their title. So you need to, uh, sometimes the content you may find may not directly relate to the topic, but then the content will relate to what you need. So you also don't just search and look at the titles, you also search and then at least look at the abstracts. If it's a bit close or if it has some of the search terms, look at the abstract and see. 
if you only sometimes look at the uh, title, you may be wrong. For example, yesterday I was listening to uh, what's up? Somebody shared about this Nigerian writer, Chima, is it Chima, Man, uh, Chima Man Dangozi or something like that. You know, about she was talking about a single story. Now, that's a title of her book, Single Story. And from her presentation, it means that she was trying to talk about um, how not to be one sided on an issue. But her title is Single Story. So if you say Single Story, if you said, let's say, um, um, how to balance, uh, balancing a topic or balance research, uh, balancing or um, balancing a discourse or whatever. So it means that you vary them. If you don't do one sided, you may hardly be able to find it, but probably her keywords may also lead you to find. So it's very important that you vary your search term in order that you are able to find some that you don't get them because you enter one search term that you can extract from your topic. You can't do that. Pick single terms to search, pick phrases, vary them, turn them around, twist them, use closer words, broader terms, you know, narrower terms. So if you are searching for, um, uh, let's say, banking, and you are not finding, so you search for bank, you search for finance, you search for, um, banking regulation, they said, vary the technologies. And then to your surprise, you realize that some things that you actually use direct um, search terms to search and you didn't get, you vary them. And then sometimes even for a single phrase search term, you, you get to a two word phrase search term, you get a hit on the search. So this article I clicked on, then you follow suit to click on this uh, download uh, button so you follow suit to click to download. I don't need it, so I won't uh, download to waste my space. So, um, what was I? So that's that's just all for you, and then you also go through. Now you can also look use the filters here. So refine result. So academic content. Do you only want journals? So you say it has. 318,000, okay, journals in here. Do you only want content from journals? Then you check market. You see that is, um, so forgive me, wait, so as I check mark only journals, I have 318,835, which is, which is, so it means I have restricted to this. So that's all I'm going to get, all right? If I take this off and I choose book chapters, so you see I have five. So you can use it to reduce it because sometimes it comes with unnecessary content. If you are looking for reports, all right? And then uh, what other? Now, if you're do, doing um, trend analysis and you want data in a certain, a particular uh, year range, then you come here, you can see say publication date from, so if I should do, um, let's say 2000, to 2010, sorry, 2010, all right, and you click on apply. So I have 75,000 plus content, all right, in which case the reduction has taken the system I inputted away. Did I also check something up? All right, so what makes a new business startup successful? Okay, so we use this filters to um, if you are in a particular field, you choose your field of study to uh, limit them so that you don't get to uh, have so many to scroll through. All these are time wasters. Well, the more, the longer time you spend on browsing and searching and looking for the right ones, remember that the day is going by. As the day goes by, you are getting closer to the deadlines. Now, the files are normally sorted by, you can see, relevance. So, meaning that you try to sort the files by how relevant they are to the search term that you entered, okay? So meaning that the more relevant one will be the ones presented up close at the top, okay? So if you need to change that, you click and then you say newest, if you want newer content, in which case it won't be, it won't take the relevance away, but then newer, its, it's currency takes prominence. 
And then you can also have, if you are looking for older content, you click on old, and then the system will look for older content on the search term for you. So you can see we have 2000, all right? And then, uh, yes, 2099 um, downwards. Okay, so if I reverse it to newest, then we have 2010. Remember, we have a search term in there. So all this was still feeding into the search term. And then if I change it to relevance, then remember, newest will focus on the dates of publication, but relevance focuses on the, the title. All right. So the, how related, how relevant the content is to your search term. Okay. So that's, that's about the interface on. And then you can see they also have, um, I think I saw advanced search, is not here. Okay, so let's try that at Science Direct as well to see the interface. So that was JSTOR. Let me go to Science Direct X. So this is Science Direct. I use this as example because these are general, so you can get information on all spheres of learning and research. So when you come here, you can see, please look at the interface where so you see they have keyword, author name, uh, journal or book title, all right, volume issue. So depending on what data item you have, the search term part that you have to search with, okay? So if I come here, and I'm using a keyword search. In this case, you want anything on the particular subject area. Okay, so if I go to impact on ICT for business, and then I click on search. Yeah, so this is what I have, antecedent to open business model in the ICT based sector. All right, so um, this is the result that I have. It's asking me to sign in. Now, you can see that I don't have download because I told you I'm using my modem. Let me see if it's still the case. Yeah, so I will not be given access to download unless so you can see it's a get access. Now I'm going to search with this var of campus because I've already signed in, and then you realize that now I've the same search terms, you see that the results will be different. So I think I had my off-campus list displayed. Yeah, so I'm going to go to Science Direct through my off-campus link. Okay, so as I'm here, I'm going to put in the same search term and search. So you can see that because I did it via off campus from this interface, let me go to the other one and go back. You can see the difference. So please don't let these things uh, you know, put pressure or stress you. Once you sign and you don't see the, the the opportunity to download, you should know that you have not signed it. Sometimes you can be on campus and yet the internet may not be stable. That sometimes also happens because I have had those experiences. And then you say that, oh, but I'm using the UG internet. When the system is slow, the internet is slow, that happens. So when you're on campus and the internet happens to be slow or not non-responding, then please leave it if you have your own modem sign in and then um, log into it and sign in. So if you look at this, I don't have the chance to download. Now, this one that I have the chance to download, you should I say open access, meaning that this material is free anyway, it's not for sale. These are an open access content. So even when you don't have access, there are some content that you can get open access. Now, after I signed in, now you see download selected article. All right, download, 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 download. You can see that almost all of them um, download. Okay, so please don't let these things stress you. Always remember to sign in and search. Okay. So um, 
Now, if we should also go to advanced search, uh, this will happen when you want to sometimes combine uh, use emerald insights uh, let me go to off campus emerald insights to see their advanced search okay i think that was what was giving me signing problems Or maybe I'll go back to JSTOR. The camera out is not responding. Okay, so right now I'm back at JSTOR. So you click on the advanced search. So these advanced searches also vary. Now, if you look at the information science that is asking, okay, for the advanced search, and then the one that, um, let me take this off, go back, come again. Okay, so I go to advanced search and then to find articles with these terms. So you enter your search term here, all right? And then you also add these details. Now, as I was saying, the interfaces and the requirements for searching differ. So pay attention. So if I come to JSTOR, so you see JSTOR as well. So JSTOR says you enter your keyword here. So when I enter, um, for instance, um, business, let me do the same again. So, okay, let me change and go to social. So I have, um, let's say teenage. So instead of when we are doing a keyword search, you enter teenage pregnancy. But when you're doing the advanced search, so when you come here, you can only enter the pregnancy here. All right. So, and then they have the so second term. So you have keyword, is the second term. And then you, so you can also enter a phrase here anyway. And then when you come here, you have your Boolean operators here. Now you have the AND, you have all NOT. Now these are the major ones. Now when you say AND, what you are basically telling the system is that the system should search for articles and resource content that has teenage and pregnancy in them, in the title and possibly the content before and present those ones, all right? If you, so what it means that is only present you with those content. If you choose or, it means that you want a content that has either teenage or pregnancy. If you choose not, what it means is that you only want um, content or resources which uh, border on teenage, all right, but not pregnancy. So it means that you don't want anything to do with pregnancy. You only want write-ups or research on teenagers. All right. So that's that's basically. So if I so let me click on search, add. So you can also add more. So add a search box like this. So teenage pregnancy, let's say homelessness or streetism. All right, then you, once you are done, select an access type, content I can access, meaning that um, you only want content that the investor of Ghana subscribes. So you don't want the system to present you with so many things, most of which you don't have the right to download, okay? So content I can access, meaning that the runs that your institution subscribes to. So you should uh, be aware of that. And if you need to filter, if you want articles on um, if you want content on only articles, uh, review papers, uh, books, 
uh, research reports, you should know what you want. Then you use some of these filters to uh, fine tune them. All right. Then you, you submit advanced search. Okay. So streets versus elites, tensions, trade offs, and treaties with street children in Accra. So you can see that it's, it's close. So you go and read the abstract and then not your grandparents. Uh, you pronounce this for me in your head. The Afropolitan detective in the urban crime novels of Corte and Crompton. I, I, I have something, you can see that from the abstract, it has something on teenage. All right, so those are the resources that we sent. And because I'm signing via Afcom, you can see download, download. So if I happen to want them, then so please, the interfaces and how they respond to, uh, let me try search journal, how they respond to advanced search differ. So please uh, do that and vary your search term to search. And as I've said, do not be tired on searching. Keep clicking. You go to signs that I didn't get, go to Emerald Insight, go to JSTOR, go to Scopus, get some link, go to other resources in the field of study. And then you'll be able to, if you come to search, so let's go to the advanced search. Okay. So you can see this one too. So it says, um, we enter our search term here. So, um, What's, what's this? Uh... So let's see. COVID. I don't want to do COVID, but my head is growing empty. COVID nineteen. So it's anywhere. So what this means, so you can see that this one is also different. The design of the interview is different. Anywhere, what does it mean anywhere? So it's asking that this search term that you put here, uh, should it find it if it's in the title or if it's, uh, uh, if it's the author's name keyword, all right? Or if it's found anywhere, okay, of the content. So if it be in the title, if it be in the abstract or the content. So. You can see that this also was uh, JSTOR is asking for the willing operators and other things. This one is also quite different in its design. All right. Because what it means is that they have already um, embedded the Boolean in there already. So these are just other ways of presenting them to you to choose. And then you also enter, so let's say, um, vaccination. So vaccination. So is that anywhere or in the title? So let's say, let me choose title for this published in enter journal. So if you have a journal name, then you enter it, all right? Otherwise you can leave it and then publish dates. If you have this information, all dates. So you leave it there, uh, access type. So that's what I mean by browse the interface, look at it, understand what they need for you to conduct an advanced search. Now, advanced search becomes important when you need very specific information. You see, when you need the key, when you use a keyword to search, normally you realize that the system may not um, give you that specific. So it gives you the keyword content that match the match the the, the search term. All right, the, in the subject area, then you download or you browse through and download the relevant ones. But when you, you were using the advanced search, means you are trying to find very, very specific uh, information. So browse the interface, relax. These are English descriptors, and then you are able to respond to the drop downs, select the appropriate ones, filter the results, and then look at them, go through, and download the ones that you need. So for what I entered, say, association between COVID 19 morbidity and mortality rates and BCG vaccination. So you can see that I have exactly the two search terms that I entered, all right? And what happens also that I have articles, so I have 12, all right? In which case, if I search general, I was going to have so many and I, will have, I would have had to now be scrolling up and down, moving from page to page to go through them. 
All right, preparing for school look for school located COVID-19 vaccination clinic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can see that for the result that I was presented, I have both search terms in there. So that's basically the advanced search in the searching. What I need you to remember most is that please do not be tired. Uh, when you search one database, you don't get it, then you stop. Please, there are so many of them. So a lot of what I've used right now are, um, what do you call it, they are as humanities, okay, humanities based. So please be sure that if you are a science student, look for the ones in your area and also the ones that are general. So this one, for instance, is religion and philosophy. So if that's not in your area, you don't bother coming in here, all right? So, and then in bracket, it tells you what it covers, what religions, major denomination, bibli uh, biblical studies, religion, history, epistemology, and all that, all right? So you take your time, you read about them, go in there. And then you should also, uh, once you use them, you take note of the ones that serve your need. Like someone was asking which one they can use in, in finance. As you use them, take note of the ones that will serve your need, the ones that are general. So you can see Liverpool University Press, full text, access to ebooks and journals in the social sciences and humanities. All right. So this one's finance, you get information in there. Uh, social studies, you get information. Then you go there and then take note. So when you search one, you don't get, you go to the other and then you'll be able to uh, serve yourself and then take yourself of stress. Okay, so let's look at some of the ebooks. Let's look at so those are the general databases for you. Let's look at ebooks and then we'll look at plagiarism and end. Okay, so for the ebooks, this is the tab. That's the last tab we are tackling. Okay, so for the ebook, these are the ebooks platforms that are available. Okay, so we have the Elga Online. You read about them. So Elga Online includes scholarly research monographs, research handbooks, companion dictionaries, encyclopedia. So you can tell the sources that you get if you uh, contact the Elga Online ebook. Now we also have ProQuest Book Ebook Central. So proper ebook central wide selection of ebooks in all subject areas. Okay, question answered. And then we also have science direct ebook. So normally when you search in science direct, the results that are presented, you can sift and get books, or you can also um, get book chapters in there. Normally they give you book chapters because their platform has not been formatted to sell full books. So they, they don't give you the whole book. So you get book chapters. Uh, it all borders on copyright issues because they cannot give you the full book. Now, JP Digital. So, JP Digital is a comprehensive ebook platform that also includes videos of life, surgeries, and journals in the fields of health sciences, medicine, dentistry, nursing, so pharmacology, and so you know those in the field. You know, so it gives you videos is 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 very good, especially for the medical students and the nurses. So you have videos of surgeries and so many resources that you can uh, get to use. Okay. So I will just uh, open the interface so you see what's in the, um, please. all right. So you can see the interface. So you have books, you have videos, <coughs> journals, MCQs that multiple choice questions. So those of you, um, I remember some one somebody was telling that we normally should introduce students to the MCQs because um, you know some lecturers sometimes this is a secret. Don't tell anybody I told you. And, they, and this is why they find some of the MCQs in the health sciences. So you can also go there once in a while, go and look at it, address yourself, and then get some skills. When you go there, you need to create an account. So I won't dwell too much on that. Uh, so these are some of the fields that you can get MCQs on cardiology, uh, dermatology, medicine, ophthalmology. Let me stop before I hit on one that I cannot pronounce. Okay, so that is for the uh, medical and health science students. Okay. 
Let's look at ProQuest eBook Central. No. Okay. Um, let me let me switch my intern. Let me see if the other internet so okay we, let me let me get it from my off campus so that um, i'm able to have access pro quests okay All right, so this is basically the interface uh, of the ebook portal. This is so this ebook portal, ProQuest ebook central, and Science Direct ebooks are the general ones that you can uh, have. The other ones, monograph and dictionaries, which are also general. But the JP Digital, as we saw, is uh, health science related. So please take note. So once you get here, you are able to you also can create an account and be able to put items on your bookshelf okay so if you have a topic to search um, which one lifelong learn okay let me choose mechanical engineering then i search you can also browse the books themselves so this is my search results on mechanical engineering. So mechanical design engineering handbook. Okay, so once you have, these are books. So this platform is designed for book. Now the challenge here is that for copyright reasons, the book is given to you online, but then you cannot download the full text. Once you search and you see completely all the time as you add, you see available means that as this, these are the ones that the investor have subscribed to based on your system, so you can download them. But there are some restrictions because of copyright issues. So let me click on this one and then we look at some of the restrictions to guide you when you are using them. Now, because of copyright issues, the book cannot be given to you in perpetuity because the assumption is that if we all have it, we will end up sharing with family and friends in which case no other person is going to buy it anymore so then the author uh, may not get their continued intended revenue as required in the book trade or as intended okay so once you come here, this is the book, mechanical design engineering handbook now you see read online and when you read it online you can always have all aspects of the book all the time but it said download book that's when you want to download the full book. Now, this below here, down here is a restriction that comes with if you want to download the full book. It says, get all pages, required free third party software. Check out this book for up to 21 days. So, when you download, it comes with some specialized uh, PDF software that enables you to open it. And for that reason, you can only hold it for 21 days. After 21 days, the book or the software has been configured to be to self-destruct. So meaning that uh, the, you can't open it again after 21 days, in which case you have to go again and download it. It's all uh, the means for them to uh, protect themselves. Now, in the other way, if the parts of the contents you need, or if you don't need the whole book and you need a certain portion, then you download PDF chapter, you download a chapter. So get up to 16, 168 pages, sorry, get up to 168 pages. Uh, use any PDF software. So just look at the restriction between this and that. This one, it comes with a specialized third party you know, software. Okay, and then this one is any PDF at all. So then you can decide to download uh, as and when you need the, the particular pages, okay? Pages remaining for copy, uh, pages remaining, okay, PDF, you can 
print up to 168 pages. Okay, so please let's take note of that. Now, if you need to read online, all you do, so these are the table of content. You can browse through and then see the areas that you need, which can inform which part you intend to download. If you need to read online, so if you're downloading the book, this is it. If you need to read online, you right click whilst it's uploading. So if you also decide to read online, meaning that you don't always need to remember the search term. So then you can add the book to your bookshelf. That's just like the way you go to the library, the books are on the shelf. You, this is your electronic bookshelf. So after you create your account, then you click on add to bookshelf. So meaning that when you come here and you want to read it, you go straight to your bookshelf, you click, and then materials on your bookshelf will be listed for you. Then you click on the one that you want to uh, read. The citation is also, I believe, provided already. So if you are the one who still thinks you wouldn't like to use Mendeley or any reference manager, when you click on the citation, the system will populate it for you. Okay, okay, this is the reading. Yeah, so if you need to read online, it opens for you, and then you go through the chapters, the one that you want to read, you click, and then the system will expand the content of the chapter for you. Result on page, all right, then you go through, take your time. Is it to use the most important intent here is to be sure that you know how to maneuver around the content and also how to get access to it. So if you want to cite, uh, get citation, you click on get citation. All right. So this is a citation. You choose your style, okay? The reference style. So it's already on MLA and accept in a, uh, accept a different case in a particular department or your department, you choose the University of Ghana, subscribe to APA, you choose APA before you copy. All right, so that's that's about it. So just take your time, relax, look around the interface. Almost everything you need, you know, if it's a page you need to print, of course the restrictions are there, so you can print, click to print. All right, once you have a good source of internet, please be sure you own a modem. As I keep saying, normally, when you are hitting or you are hard pressed with time, that is when these internet sources fail you. So that's about the ebook portals. Um, I will pause here and take questions, which, if possibly, will ask us to do more, then we'll do that uh, before we zoom into the last section. So that's about the searching uh, skills and also advanced searching. And the general database and ebook portals. You take your time, you read about them. If uh, so, I'm waiting for your questions, if any. So, if I go to Science Direct as well, and you search for the, so you can see Science Direct ebook. All right, Science Direct ebook. So, the Science Direct itself, and then Science Direct ebook. So, you take your time, um, look at them. Focus on the ones that serve you. So it's showing 28,000 books. All right. And these are the fields. So to search, you need to browse through the field. Okay. Abrasive water jet performance, blah, blah, blah. Then you click academic and professional publishing. And you click, then you take your time, you browse around, you click around, you download. Always remember, please, to sign in. Please, any questions? Or do I uh, check them from the questions and answer section? Okay. So this is what I got. I'm trying to register, but after entering my barcode, okay, I think I dealt with it. Eric, please, I've tried logging in, but they say my student number has expired. Mm. So that can happen if you are a PhD student and so you need to you need to get there to get that uh, corrected for you uh, please how do you narrow down your search results even after inputting all the relevant keywords without also missing out on relevant or important papers okay that's why i said i never get tired of searching because as you said so that's what we call the narrow terms, broader terms. Okay, so when you search by it, when you narrow 
you are going to get very specific information. When you use broader term, you're going to get wide range. Okay, so you try both. You try what as and when you are not getting the information, you try, you vary your searching and then your styles, your terms, and then you go through. It's tedious. It's tedious, I know. So if you don't want to lose some or you don't want to miss the instance of the fact that you think should come to the top may probably not be the case. So then you try and uh, work around it. If you need help, your librarians are always around. How often is the article database updated? Uh, so these databases are not located in the University of Ghana, so we subscribe to them. So as and when papers are published. So for instance, if you yourself uh, write an article and you publish, as and when it is published, it is updated. So it's, it's always current. Uh, please, how soon will the video... Hey, take it easy, oh, Madam Christie. How can you avoid being lost in the pool of information um, by applying the skills we have just gone through? Um, so being lost can be that you have too many. Being lost can be that you miss out on something. So not missing out, try narrowing, try specific, try browsing, try reducing, try varying your search term. So you don't get lost even by the relevant content. Okay. How do you reduce the vast number of articles resulting? Okay, so basically the same. The webinar is so revealing. Thank you. And you can congratulate your executives for doing that. Please, can I come again with finding the MCQs? Can I come again? Are you asking me to come again or you want to come again? So the MCQ, so I take it right away so that you are a health science student or faculty. So please go there, take your time, relax, breathe in, browse around the MCQs, create an account. They even give you the chance to try them, okay? Please, I am a SCLAM student. I want to know if it's compulsory to get ethical clearance for my research. Uh, please consult your research coordinator in your department, please, before I give a wayward answer. Can I find information from departments like ministries of information, budgets on um, those kind of information may be difficult. So on that, you can try the RIPS library or the, the United Nations library. Else, some of these info department or unit, they have their own information uh, centers. They normally call information centers instead of library. You, you visit their website and see if you can get some. It's all part of not getting tired of searching. Can I find information from the Department of, okay, uh, so the same answer. How do I gain access anytime I log in to my, how do I gain access anytime I log in? I, I don't, it doesn't work. Uh, please, you can visit me, so we try together to see. I'm at the Rips Library, or you can, uh, go to BAM library. Can you please go over the off campus? I take it this person just joined. How do I get to the ProQuest search engine? So please go to the library web page and then click on ebooks. Let me just put it in the chat. So the is sorry bam.ug.edu.gh. So please, that's the URL to the library's e-resource interface. So please, I uh, put it in the chat chat room. So please, uh, when you go there, look for ebooks. You click on ebooks, and then you you have the interface. Please. How do I activate? Please check your student your, your, your admission letter. I tried the off-campus access and after. Typing in my password, I got this feedback instead. Your pin is not complex enough to be secured, please. Yes, so please look beneath uh, this information. You realize that they give you uh, what they need for you to create the, the password. I think they require a, a mixture, a combination of alphabet and numbers. So just for the sake of this, let me just go there in case someone else as that challenge, so of campus. No.
Ya, 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 ya. Okay, let me let me be sure we are okay what we've done so far. Then I'll log out and then we'll go back there. But please check below this message that you received. You realize that they told you it's your password should be a combination of alphabet and numbers, and it shouldn't include, I think, special characters like um semicolon and all that. I typed in different password, but same feedback. Take it easy, Mr. Elkana. So so just take your time and look at it then. Okay, so these are the questions I have. Is there anyone who has another question as we are moving to the last segment? Okay. All right, so the last segment of the presentation or the workshop is the is on avoiding plagiarism okay so this is where we are now now you normally need this to submit your assignments and uh, project work as graduate students so please let's be aware um, all right so I said the general principle underlying <clears throat> ethical writing is a notion that a written work of an author, be it a manuscript or a magazine or a scientific journal or a research paper submitted for a course or a grant proposal submitted to a funding agency represent the implicit contract between the author and the reader. So we should take note of that, which is the reason why when you use it, you should be sure you give the right Credence. So these are some ethical codes, so honesty and integrity. So for these things, you nobody will normally be there to check you. But when you try to adhere to these ethical codes, you realize that you finish your work and you are within you know, the remit of academic integrity or righteousness. So we say try to be honest. Trying to be honest, meaning that you in your write-up, don't, don't don't falsify data if you are quoting from a source and the writing in there is not exactly what you intended to get to buttress a point please go and search for another one that is directly related instead of trying to kind of um what is trying to forge it or force and type rephrase it in a manner that it will suit meanwhile if somebody should try and check and to look at the actual source from which you took the, the content, even though you have, you have paraphrased, you realize that that's, even your paraphrase doesn't match what was there, all right? And I try to be objective. And carefulness, in this case, um, uh, the content that you use, the resources that you use, you try to be uh, careful in the manner that you don't hurt anyone in your write-up, all right? Your writing should ensure that at the end of your work, nobody should read your work and feel like they've been hurt or that you have used some other content that were not relevant and also we mean for instance carefulness can also apply for instance those of you who use Mendeley uh, for some of the database when you extract articles and upload them sometimes it's unable to um, extract all the bibliographic data from it the date of the publication the title and also that the title may have some funny characters in there please you look at it carefully and then you correct it so once you are doing all this you realize by the time you finish your content and then your reference list everything is neat neat try to be you know openness is very important now i like to uh, link this uh, even with your research supervisor all right some of us are so afraid of our supervisors we tend to behave as though they are monsters uh, that for me is never the case sometimes i from my experience uh, having been a TA for a long time, when I some years back, you realize that the pressure on the supervisor. So you have the same lecturer supervising the PhD, supervising an MBA, MPhil, a first degree. The same person is on a research field. The same person is teaching masters, uh, teaching PhD, teaching first degree. All right, has seminars, has meetings. So sometimes I've been with you. We are almost getting to two hours, three hours now. 
my throat is dry, I don't have water. So by the time I finish with this seminar and somebody meets me at the gate, sometimes the mood may be different. It may not be that the person you know, doesn't care about you, but we should also know that they are human beings. We should try and read their moods, all right? If you, you I mean, even some questions to ask, uh, find out from their expression, even from the way they welcome you, the time that you go there, all right? Most lecturers get to the office very early to finish some things before working hours. So around that time, please don't try to worry the person unless they are the one who invited you. So once you study your supervisor, and find out some of these things, you get, realize that you always meet them in a the good mood, in which case you are always able to open up to them and discuss. Otherwise, you get there and then there are these real human beings. And then you go there and then the first question, I told you to change this. Why didn't you change it? And you have all this. And there's always that banter that creates that kind of tension between students and lecturers and supervisors. Respect for intellectual property, please. <clears throat> so as you use the content, please try and give the right credence, confidentiality. You know what that means, your data collection, even your write-up at the time that you are doing your data analysis uh, reporting. Uh, remember that your write-up should not give any indication through which anybody can use to trace a particular respondent or an organization. So even in your writing, not just how you couch your questionnaires, all right, or how you design it, but even in your write-up, you try to ensure that um, nobody can follow the way you wrote the content to be able to trace, uh, to say that, no, this question or this thing could have come from uh, maybe a private bank or maybe from a librarian or maybe from a first degree. No, you, you write, even in your writing, there should be confidentiality besides your questionnaire and all that. Responsible publication, all right? Shouldn't put that content that uh, can be considered dangerous or harmful or bring this unity in any other field or among uh, population or your study sites. If the, if the, 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 you know, if you say, for instance, that your research site was Kumbungu, you know, the, 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 content that you churn out and published. I remember, was it uh, Sarkozy or one of the visitors who said something, I think again, Krubos, and he raised a lot of tension. <coughs> Sorry, a lot of tension <coughs> on it. So you as a writer, as a researcher, try not to <coughs> get into that. Okay, and then the issue of legality as well. So please be sure that the way you write or you publish, and the way you use content, nobody is able to take you on, even to the point uh, that you are found liable for something and for that you are held in any other <coughs> way based on what you turned out. So please, let's take note of this. And it all boils down to trying to be honest. Once you are honest and considerate in your approach to the work and your supervisor and even your colleagues, you realize that a lot of these things fall in place smoothly. <clears throat> now again, we have referencing standards. Um, these standards are by professional houses that uh, promulgate them for institutions to subscribe to. The University of Ghana has subscribed to APA, except for some departments like languages and maybe religion or any special area that the department they have discussed to choose a different referencing standard, then you can do so. But in general, the University of Ghana subscribe to the AP reference a standard method used to acknowledge resource resource of information and ideas used in your work in a way that uniquely identifies the source so in that regard you are you know showing respect and acknowledging uh, the work of the, the the author now it's also good to know some of these referencing standards a lot of them you can find in Mendeley which I think is our third session of this webinar series the essence is that um, I had an experience with one PhD candidate who extracted an article from his work, and then when he sent it to be published, they said they were not using APA, so then he had to change, I think, to Vancouver, all right? So then he came back, and it's all about just a click of a button, and then he changes, which is what informs the essence or the importance of using some of these reference managers. Otherwise, you spend days trying to change comments, rearranging, you know, italizing and reformatting the references style to uh, the taste of the particular publishing house, something you can do with ease. Do not combine styles. Now I say that you cannot combine referencing styles in the same um, 
projects. Okay, so when one project, if you choose APA, it's only APA. You can't use APA here and then use MLA in chapter two and use no. It it doesn't work like that. Why do we need to cite and reference? So you do that to avoid plagiarism. And uh, that borders to the issue of legality, to acknowledge debt to others, other writers, uh, to verify our quotations, to enable um, all those who read our work to locate your sources. Now, once you give the opportunity for someone else to locate your sources, meaning that you're also helping them to work faster, because if somebody can see a relevant reference in your work and they can trace to that, it saves them the time of you know, creating system to be able to find the same resource. <clears throat> to enable readers to follow up and read more fully the cited uh, author's argument. So if I come to your work, I read it. Whilst reading, I rather you have cited somebody. If I find the person's quotation very revealing, then I may want to follow that to go and also look at what the fellow said to edify myself in the area, to demonstrate the body of knowledge upon which your own research was based. Now, you know, especially in academic research, not unlike um, general book writing, you are supposed to demonstrate that what you are writing, what you're churning out, is not a, a story you are telling that on top of your head. It's something you have gone to the field to study. And even besides that, something that other authors have also worked on in other areas, all right, which is the reason why you quote, you search and quote other relevant sources to buttress what you churn out. So whilst you reference and cite, or you cite and reference, you are basically telling the reader and the research community that this is not just a story you concocted, but this is what other researchers may have also looked at in other geographical areas or in part or in some other um, styles. Now, what we also need, again, to avoid plagiarism is knowledge of plagiarism itself. Now, uh, this is a quote from the University of Ghana uh, plagiarism policy. So it says, plagiarism is to represent without acknowledgement of its authorship by another, <clears throat> an expression of an idea or work of another in any academic examination or term test or in connection with any other form of work attributed to an individual such as a publication, a publication, invention, or creative work. So this is the link to the policy. Maybe if I finish, I'll show you on the website. So that's that's plagiarism per the investors policy. I will urge all of us to get to the policy, read in detail so we know what is required of us. It's, it's, it will not be pleasant, you finish your work and maybe you have some fellowship immediately, you travel outside and then there are challenges with your work and you probably may have to come back or have to ask for a soft copy to rework it. Let's try to follow these things so that when you are done, you are certain that your hand is off the work. What constitutes plagiarism? This is also from the policy, so to steal and pass off the idea or work of another as one's own, to use another production without crediting the source, to commit literary thefts, to present as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source. Turning in someone else's work as your own, copying words or ideas from someone else without giving credit, uh, falling, failing to put a quotation in quotation marks. Please, this is very uh, important. Let's take note. Failing to put a quotation, a quotation mark. So please, the advice is that once it's a verbatim quotation, please put in quotation immediately. Don't think that, oh, let me do this, let me type this, let me type the reference when I finish, I'll come and do it. You may forget, something may call your attention. Your WhatsApp may be, a phone call may come from something that you may need to, and before you come, you leave it, you gloss over it, and then at a later point, you are unable to tell if this is something you typed yourself or something that, um, something that you found somewhere, all right? That becomes a problem. Okay. Please, just a moment.
Uh, sorry about that. One I saw Christian, I thought it was your coordinator, your secretary. Apparently, it's some Christian else. I didn't look at the number. Okay, so changing words, but copying the sentence structure. All right, so some of us will come. So we we'll look at that when we, look, we get into looking at um, a plagiarism, a sample report, a sample tenetine report. So changing words, but copying the sentence structure of a source without giving credit. All right, so instead of doing this, we advocate that you paraphrase fully, except technical uh, words that you can change. Interweaving various sources of uh, various sources together in a work without citing. Copying so many words or ideas from a source that makes up the majority of your work, whether you give credit or not. So this point, for this point, remember that <clears throat> APA, the American Psychological Association Reference Standard, does not allow that we copy uh, continuous words of 40, all right? A statement of 40 words continuous to buttress a point. That is not allowed. So, and the uh, uh, idea is that if it becomes necessary, so let's say it's something that the Vice Chancellor said and it's relevant and you want to quote it, then you indent it. Okay, when I when we finish, I'll demonstrate that you indent it. But that should be rare in your work. So you can't just visit a page and then copy chapters and paragraphs and be pasting your work. That is not acceptable. So tips for smooth citing and referencing. So cite as you write. So we are saying, as I mentioned earlier, immediately you, you could please cite immediately. That's what I mean by cite as you write. Never say that, okay, let me type the reference when I come inside. No, you, you do it. So if you use Mendeley, for instance, all you need to do is to ensure that you insert the index, the reference list will be generated for you automatically. So it takes away <clears throat> some of these challenges. If that's not the case, please try and follow suit and do that immediately. Now, keeping records is also very important. So as you work, there may be instances that you visit uh, web pages like let's say WHO's web page or World Bank web page, and then you pick some content in there, you copy right from the web page, paste into your work. Now, there may be that time that you want to verify that same content. You may not have internet, the internet may not be responding. You may be on a deadline, or you, you can't even remember where you took it from. All right, so all it says that try and keep records of every. Uh, detail, especially the ones that you took from websites and relevant ones from database and all that, so that you are able to always fall back on them, copy the URLs, paste them, create a specialized file for record keeping of your project work, so that you're always able to fall back on these things and verify and cross-check things. Okay, so know the basic information needed for citing. All right, so author names, we we'll look at that, reference, adopt reference management tool, so you're talking about whether you get to use Mendeley or EndNote to help you with your work. So these are some of the basic information. We all know that citing a book is different from citing a journal article. So it's always good that you know, so that even when you are using a software to generate your index and your reference list, you are always able to tell if it's right or wrong. So these are the details for a book. That's for a journal, all right? So the source will be shared for you. Let me not uh, waste time. So this is uh the also the reference styles the standards now this i'm going to post you and ask a question so this is harvard and this is apa they are supposed to be different now i want someone to let's look at it critically and want someone to tell me some differences that you see between the harvard references style and the apa please unmute and speak or if you type it in the chat box or question and answer session, that will be fine. Yes, I'm waiting for an answer. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Mr. Kornita, are they able to unmute themselves? Yes, please, they are. Yes, so please unmute and then tell me the difference. Look at it critically and then tell me the difference you see. Yes, anybody?
Hello. 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 Yes. Yes, please. So I could see that there is a full stop after the the, the date, the year in the Harvard, but there is no one. After there is a full stop, yeah. With the Harvard, but there is a full stop after the year of the APA style. Okay. Is that all? Yeah. So, so this is what she means. So you see in between the year and the title. So from here, so you can see that immediately after the year in bracket, there's no full stop and then the title continues. But when you come to APA, immediately after the year in bracket, there's a full stop. This, this is just one punctuation. And if you miss it, all right, a supervisor can have a problem with you if he's keen on reference, which he should, all right? And then you look at this one too, you can see that there are some differences. So please, let's take note. If you look at them critically, what it means is that when you are using the reference management software and you change, you are able to tell that these things follow the standard. Okay. Now, wh wh why is this even more important? Is if you look at this guy, who decided that he's going to work manually. So he has all these books and articles around him. There is the tendency that he may type in something, something calls his attention, he gets off and comes back. Maybe the books may have been arranged or he himself forgets. And then he is unable to tell from which content. Now, while searching the actual uh, material from which you took the content to cite, that is time that you are wasting. And when you have a focus, when you are able to concentrate, that's the time you need to work fast to be able to get enough done. So if you don't adopt all these tools and the right standards and skills to work, you realize that some of these basic things, they kind of take your time away and you're unable to work. Now, if you follow what he's doing, what we're saying is that you have all this content to work with, articles, book, conference papers, and then you are also, once you go from there, you are to cite. All right, so there's a, you are going to have a lot of typing to do, uh, lots of referencing may happen, and then there will also be a lot of mistakes out as a result of that. So we advise that you adopt this reference management tools, uh, two of which the university subscribes to, which is EndNote and Mendeley. So you see the reference management tool, when you use it, the assumption is that this is a database in here. So if it's Mendeley, that is LCVS Cloud Server into which when you download all these sources, okay? When you download all these sources, you have the uh, content in your account stored here. Meaning that if you left your laptop, you are always able to get another one wherever you find yourself and access all this content again. Whatever, unlike if you work manually, you can't carry all the books with you all the time. But when you use the reference management tools, you realize that because they are online, uh, you are always able to access them. When we get to Mendeley, those of you who don't use it yet, you see uh, the impact. Okay, so I'll basically uh, move quickly on this. And then, uh, so you are seeing the reference management tool, using them, uh, have rapid expansion of software literature, you know, its usage, because you're able to do a lot, you're able to access a lot, you're able to store a lot. Unlike previously, where if you have some on your pen drive, you have some on your laptop, materials are scattered. Even when you need them the most, you then have to either re-download or use for them, look for them, or wait and get them where you store them. So this will come to us as a third session. So why academic integrity is important for several reasons. First, having academic integrity means that others can trust you, your supervisor can trust you now. If during your studentship, your supervisor realizes that you follow instruction, you follow the academic integrity principles, what it means is that if there are some sponsors, if students, if there is someone they require to be hired as a lecturer or for some job or some project work, once they can trust you, they know that if they make you a partner on some project, you do the right thing. But if you think you do some ways and means as uh, is used in football to complete your work, uh, know that your supervisor probably may not have the time or may not be able to verify. But some way, somehow, subconsciously, he or she knows that there was something fishy about your work. And once they can trust you, they can call you for further you know, collaboration. 
Secondly, having academic integrity is important because it provides value to your degree. Employers prefer to hire graduates whom they believe to have higher personal integrity. Remember that some companies are so serious that when you say you have a master's, you have a, they may send somebody to go take a look at what you did in school. Okay, so we are going to look at how to use the Tenetin software. So what is Tenetin? This is from the university's uh, plagiarism policy. Okay, so it said Tenetin is essentially a test matching system. The report generated identifies those sections of the text that matches other text sources in the Tenetin repository. <clears throat> the overall total of text match will be expressed as a percentage, which is referred to as a similarity index. Now, what is the tendency is, a, is essentially a text matching system. What it means is that as you write, the pieces of text that you quote from other sources, <clears throat> when you submit your work, the system is going to match your content to other content online. <coughs> Forgive me. To other content online. And then when that happens, is going to only inform you that this content you have in your work, I can only see that similar ones are in this article, are in this thesis, are in this book. Now, Tenetin does not call you a thief or dishonest by hurting those. The software has been designed to match your text against others online and to determine how many or how much of it is similar to others. So in which case, the investors policy says that um, the similarity index of your work should be 20%. What it means is that 20%, 80% of your work should be from you, should be your own write-up, all right? And then your quotations according to and the text you took from other sources should make only 20%. The reason being that you brought a topic that you have something to research on. So tell us what you found in the field. What did they say? What are other sources saying? They say that the sources from other content should be 20%, 80%, all right, from your intro right, right down to your analysis and conclusion should form 80, all right? That's basically what it means. So Tenetin does not call anybody a thief. I like to dwell on this because normally you find students stressed up when they see Tenetin highlighting major parts of their work, especially uh, when the highlights are in red. Of course, it should be in concern, but the system is not calling you a thief. Mostly the color codes are to differentiate between, in the work I mean, are to differentiate between um, the various colors. So you realize that when you open a report, you have so many colors in there. Okay, so what are some of the limitations of Tenet? Tenet does not offer a ready solution to plagiarism. Its use is therefore not a substitute for good academic writing practices, for example, correct citation and reference. So we are saying that Tenetin will not be able to tell if your citation was correct or not, all right? So that will be your duty. It is also your duty to ensure that whatever you took from elsewhere you have cited, all right? If you do something from the credence to the right source, So sorry, my interface. My 
account went off. I can't tell why, but okay. Hello, can you can you see my screen? Yes, please. You can. All right. Okay, great, great. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Uh, my system, my um, account went off. So we said that Tenetin does not offer ready solution. So it's up to you to make sure that you do the right thing. Limitations of Tenetin consist so as that Tenetin may not be able to accomplish the following: detect plagiarized work from books or sources which are old and not available online. So meaning that if you took some piece of text from an old thesis in the library, which is not online yet, then it will not be able to match it. So if you did not cite it, remember that you can stand trial for it, for it in the future. So please be sure you do the right. Then it only works with content that are available online. Now remember that a lot of materials are being digitized. So if you think, uh, you know, you can surreptitiously get a lot of content that are not online. Once they bring them online, remember the publication date can always be determined or be used to find you out. Many people have suffered that fate. Now, detect, Tenetin cannot detect work which is plagiarized by translating from one language to the another. So you can decide that instead of uh, doing your project work yourself, you go and look for a Chinese guy who have done the same thing in Chinese and translate it into English and submit. Fine, Tenetin can't be able to catch you, but remember posterity. Always, never forget. Now, search all electronic databases. Now, there are some databases or information resources that are restricted. So, Tenetin, in that case, may sometimes not be able to get in there to match your content, but sometimes may provide the links. So, please be sure you do the right thing. Detect images, graphs, mathematical equations that may have been plagiarized. So, please uh, watch out. Common source of plagiarism, text matching. I think we will lose that a uh, lot of it. Uh, paraphrasing, paraphrasing. So please try and paraphrase fully, copying the work of another student. Now, this is what I was talking about. So, <clears throat> quotation, direct quotes, not duly acknowledged. For example, using the APA format, present quotation in block four when the direct quotation is more than 40 words. Conversely, use quotation marks or quotation of less than 40 words and provide the source. So when you say block form, so if it happens that there is a particular statement or some uh, words, a quotation that you think that you necessarily need and you have to present it as a single unit, and if it's 40 and above, then you can put that in block. But as I said earlier, it has to be rare in your work. <clears throat> Okay, so lecture notes, you know, copying from lecture notes, you may not be found, but please, this is part of the ethical code that we looked at. Try to be honest, okay? Try to be careful when you think, oh, it's a lecture note. The lecture note was worked on by the lecturer and probably by some TA. So when you cite it, even in future, if somebody doubts it, they can go and find out if that truly really was a lecture note for that course at that particular year. Copying laboratory data or other forms of data, you try and cite all these things and do the right thing. So text matching similarity indices. Overall similarity index should not exceed 20%. Okay, so that's the investor of Ghana's policy. These are from the policy, please. So it shouldn't exceed, so I explained that already, meaning that 80% of the text in your project work should be from your own write-up. Um, below gives the color code, so we'll look at this. Single source similarity index should not exceed 2%. A single source means that if you have a book in hand, I don't have a book now. So let's say this is a book that I borrowed from the library and I am writing and quoting from it. Now it's saying that the content that I take from it should not exceed 2% of the content of the book. So let's say you took, uh, normally I like to use research method books because we take a lot from, uh, from them. So if you pick a research method book from the library, and you are, let's say you quoted, you look, you quoted something from the intro, you quoted something from uh, sampling techniques, something from literature review, something from methodology and all that. 
It's basically saying that when you sum up all that you took from the various parts of that research method book, it should not exceed 2% okay, of the whole content, the whole volume of the book. That's basically what that means. So please, um, I'll show evidence of that when we get to see the sample similarity, I mean, Tennyson report. Acceptable number of words in an unbroken string uh, should not exceed 10 words. So um, the university is saying that Tennyson will check your work, but then when a sentence or a statement anything matches a statement in your work that is word for word for more than 10 continuous words the university say that they cannot accept that that is your own um, creation or your own write-up okay it, they says the university is saying that that can hardly be possible that two people who have not met have said the same thing word for word for more than 10 words you know that that is quite strange so what he's saying is that when the university is checking your work and they see um, continuous work that Tennyson has matched in your work that are below 10 words, then it's okay. All right, but if it's 10 words and above and you didn't cite it, the university takes it that you took it from somewhere. So please be aware. Okay, so that's basically about um, Tennyson. Now we're going to also uh, go live and do the rest of it. So I'm going to take us through Tennyson directly from the um, Sakai so that we'll see how to. So these are just uh, joining the ARCOM. Uh, so I'll explain that. So the ARCOM is just a, a course site that is created for you to be able to test your work before you submit. So if a supervisor gave you an assignment, it's not prudent for you to finish and submit to them. If they ask you to test it with anything before submitting, you need the opportunity to be able to know that you are within the range they give, as even for a particular assignment, the supervisor says that, or lecturer says they, you, you should be, your similarity index should be 15%. You should be able to test. And if it's more than that, rework it before submitting. So ARCOM is a course site that is created to enable you to do that before you submit, including your final thesis. Okay, so to submit, we are saying that you need to sign in to Sakai. Now, for some institutions, they, are, they sign in to Tenetin at Tenetin's website. But for us, the Tenetin account has been embedded in our learning management system, which is Sakai. So to get access to use Tenetin, you need to log in to Sakai first. So these are the process. So you, you go to Tenetin. So I'll show you this uh, live so that uh, it doesn't become too abstract. Okay, so let me skip. Okay, good. So when we get here, so these are the, similar, the similarity color codes. So when you test your work and the report comes and you see the blue signal, meaning that there is no matching, meaning the whole work or, or the tendency could not match all the text in your work to any other. This normally happens with, you know, the sciences where the, the work some uh, beans or plantain or some item that you have in the lab and you are doing your own using your chemicals and your machine to check and that's uh, normally always original and primary so then it won't be able to match them to any when you see green when the color is green it means that it's so this is its own color code so that's 24 by invest of Ghana is 20. so when you see green that means it's 20. It's, it's less than 20, as you say, it's 20 and below. When you see yellow, that's 21 and above, meaning that you are outside the university's color code range. These ones, as you see on the screen, are 10 its own color codes. The university's own is 20, so please take note. Orange, red, so from yellow going means you are of the range, so you need to rework the work. Okay. Now we're saying to work within the ethics of academic writing, start every project work with integrity. To do this, we say adopt the necessary tools from the onset. You know, I know for some, even this time that we are doing this, uh, it's good, but I would have wished that if, uh, Grasa, I know you always have um, orientation here and there, but if it's done early enough, then you realize that those who need help, you start with it, you pick up skill, then it doesn't become like you finish chapter one. And you didn't use Mendeley, so now you are in chapter two. Now you are going to learn Mendeley. Now you are not going to 
adopt it. How, what happens to the chapter one? It takes a lot of weight to, you know, rework that to come back on stream. So we say adopt all the necessary tools and acquire the necessary skills, you know, right from the onset. Um, be familiar with acceptable academic information resources, which is what we've taken you through, the general database, the e-books, the lib guides of campus, all this. Okay, be familiar with a set of referencing star, so APA for UG, cite as you write, we mentioned that already, to avoid unintentional plagiarism. So if you copy, paste in your work and you don't cite immediately, you may forget at some point, you may think that you were the author of that piece of text, which will end or land you in unintentional plagiarism, which is equally an academic crime. Paraphrase properly and cite immediately, even when you paraphrase. Remember, it's very difficult to trace a paraphrase. Okay, so when you paraphrase, cite immediately. Cite the original source as much as possible. So as much as possible, if you find a material and the material is citing or quoting a source, try and see if you can use a reference to trace to find the original source. Then you can read to see if what's being said is same in the original material. And then we are saying that above it all, be honest. Once you adopt honesty in your writing, you realize that everything, as I said, fall in place. Okay. So at this stage, I would like to uh, finish everything and then we'll take the last questions and end since we've spent already a lot of time. Okay, so I'm going to log in to Sakai at this stage for us to continue. So that you are to Sakai, if those who are not aware yet, is sakai.ug.edu.g. Sakai is S-A-K-A-I. So as I mentioned, you to get access to Tenetine, you need to log in to Sakai. And then you are able to turn in your work for plagiarism check. Yes, my internet is coming slow. So just about some five, 10 minutes and we are out of here. Okay, let me try and change. Internet source and see. Okay, so this is the interface for Sakai. Those who may not have used it yet. To use it, you need to sign in. Uh, system. Just a moment, please.
Okay. So to use it, I hope we are still connected. So to use the Sakai, you need to sign in. You stand with your student ID and your MIS pin. Student ID and your MIS pin. Then you click on login. Now we're going to go through two exercises. First of all, we are going to look at if there are some who don't have not used the RCOM course site yet. We're going to learn how to join the course site. So I'm saying that the RCOM course site is a course site that has been created for students to be able to test their own work, be sure they are within range, and if not working, submitting to the appropriate authority or department. So to join, you need to you come to so you sign in and after that you click on membership membership so to join the RCOM course site normally the various course site that you are members of your lecturers add you but this one because it's open you need to join so you click on membership and then you come to joinable sites joinable site that site that you can join normally you see RCOM down among this list because I have joined already up here you can see I have joined so normally you need to click to from me. So if you see, assuming this is it, then you click on join. Okay, click on join, and then you become a member. So that's basically how to join. So you log in, you click on membership, and then from up here, so you have my current course site, which is the course site that you have been added to by your lecturer, then my official course site, then you come to join our site, then you choose the side that you want to join, in which case this is, uh, in this case, it will be. So when you are done now, you want to submit a file for testing. Okay, so after you join, you can either find it up here or you come to sites at the top right corner here, right? So this is RCOM. Now always look for the very current one. Very current one, let me see how many do I have. So you can see, I have RCOM 1819, which is very old. With 1819 means 2018, 2019 academic year. And then there is also RCOM um, 1920, which is uh, 2019, 2020 academic year, All right? So I click on that or from there or from here. You can see this one is 2021. So I click on this. This is a very current one. And then I click on assignment. This segment is how to submit your file for testing. So you click on the RCOM course site, click on assignment. And you see plagiarism checker. All right, and then you scroll down. Now you can see I already have a file submitted. I already have a file submitted. That's why I can't see browse. The system is even not responding. So down here, you normally see, and see, they're supposed to be removed. Then it's not causing a lot of problems with this. Okay, so as you see, there's a file that I submitted already here. So what it means that I'll have to remove it before I can submit another one to remove it. I think because from the top you saw that they say um, Sakai elements will undergo emergency maintenance. So I think there's uh, something which is why. So you see remove attached to this. So I click to remove. Then this will change to browse. Then I'll browse and attach the new one. And then you click on submit. Please don't forget that. You click, you remove the old one. That's if you have submitted one already. And then you scroll, you click on browse to locate the one you want to now test and then click on submit. Submit is normally down here. Okay, so once you've done that, you wait for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes, your report should be in. So from the reports, I will show you, you can see that. So this is a report. You can see this is a file that was submitted, version 2B. So it's version 2B. So this is a report. So you can see the like icon. So it says 24, and it is green. Is that green or yellow? So 24. It's what is wrong. It's not supposed to be 24. Once it's green, it's supposed to be 20. So I put that also on this maintenance issue. Okay, so then to access to the report, you click on it from here.
So the report is opening. I hope it does. Oh, the internet has gone. So. Okay, so there's a report opening. Then we browse around the interface. And so that's your 1018 report. So it's a report that submitted for someone. And then from here, you can see already that it says 24. So if this file is being submitted to UG, it's already beyond by 4%, so it has to be reworked. Okay, now let's go into the work. Now you can see some of this. So once you see this, so copyright laws and policies, the positive influence of awareness of, so I see the system is saying that from here up to here, them suggest that is a continuous step that was taken from some source but then some words have been changed. Now, how does the supervisor find out? You can only find out by just clicking on this color link. So this is what I was talking about. When it's red and all that, don't worry about, about that. <clears throat> so you just click on it. So it's labeled one. So when we come here, we see the various color codes. Oh man. Let me change the link again and see if we'll have a faster. Okay, so I was trying to connect. Now you can see from here that um, all the text we we're looking at. Okay. You can see that corporal laws and policies in academic libraries. That's, that's what this is suggesting. But then when you come to where we picked it, it's a corporal law and policies. So it appears like this, it doesn't follow like that. But the truth is that this, this is an article extracted from the PhD of this person. of the challenges that one can have. So let's look at another highly. So when you come, what is the color? Okay, the color is not there. So let's look at this one. So if I should click here, let's see the difference. It's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not responding. It's not responding, but at least we can browse through. So basically, if you need to test, you click, and then it will take you to the source that turn it in. Okay, let me reload and see. I'm hoping it will not take forever. It takes you to the source from which turn it in suggests. I'm using the word suggest because turn it in does not make an emphatic statement. It only alerts you to areas that it thinks the sources in your content may have been taken from. So you only need to look at it and be sure that is not the case. That's all. Then it does not call anyone a thief. So if that is it, is that so? If you look at this, even though there is what we can uh, label what we call patch writing, so you can see this text has been changed in the middle. There is a reference there. All right. So that's what I meant by paraphrase fully. But these are not technical words. So you paraphrase fully and then you continue with your work. So he says level of copyright awareness is mostly high among library staff. When it comes, there's a level of copyright awareness among library staff. So you can see that mostly high 
has been forced in there. In the original, mostly high, it's not there. Why would you even do that? Because it doesn't even change anything, all right? So this is what's gonna patch right in. You're trying to face some pieces or force some things here and there. Okay, so you can easily be found out. So please take it easy, do the right. So if you look at this one as so well, then it didn't say that this went from here and this one was forced in. Let's see if it is true in this case as well. So it says role of academic librarians in, so role of academic librarians in handling. So it's in dealing. Handling, why would you even need to change it? You didn't need to change it. Was it meant the same copyright related issues and note that is it reported that you know it notes that reported that so this so if somebody is scrutinizing this word uh, of course the committee may decide they're basically the same and they are not important so they may let go but since you are taking it from a source why not let it flow why not paraphrase fully why trying to force some words in there so this these are examples of uh, because of the net i'd like to end these examples of how you can uh, be called for plagiarism, and these things can delay you. Now, I must warn that uh, ordinarily a committee is supposed to look at the work. Now, this has been left for the department. So, the department is supposed to have a committee that looks at the work. And then, for instance, most students ask, Why is it that my name at the title page and even the University of Ghana has been highlighted? They will be highlighted because they are online. Okay, so it doesn't mean you are a thief. But the danger is that all that counts into the similarity index, which is a lot of the concern with most students. Okay, so if, for instance, this was 24%, and the committee or the team realizes that from the title page all through to table of content, through to table of figures and all that, it's making up that 4%, then the work can pass, even though in totality it is 24%. But the University of Ghana insists that it should be, I mean, um 20 percent so please imbibe have this at the back of your mind so as you work it informs your writing it informs how much text you fetch to buttress a point uh, and then also please desist doing some of these things this person is not in best of ghana so don't worry so desist in doing some of these things write or paraphrase fully don't force words where they are not supposed to be because it is easy to find now and then if you are able to abide by all this, you will be in the righteous books of academic integrity. Thank you so much for your attention. It's been very, very long. I want your people to break this, but then they thought we could do it once. And I'm very happy that most of you have stayed online. It's always been 200 plus we started writing 250 or two something and it was always around 225 215 and i'm very happy that you are keen in, in in getting to have this course by your side thank you so much if there are some final questions we take it and then we end so let me go through questions and see please if you need to ask a question you can unmute and also ask um can i find information from department like this okay this i think i think this we have already dealt with so please if there's any question you can ask otherwise i uh, thank you for your attention and um, thank the grassac for the organization I tried the off-campus access of the type, okay. So all this, I think I've dealt with already. Let me see the... Yes, hello, sir. I think there are some hands up. I don't know if, if they still want to ask their question. Um, Abraham. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes, please unmute and speak one after. Yes, sir. Abraham, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Yeah, please coordinate that for me, yeah. so you can mention their name, then they ask their question. Okay. Yes, Abraham, we are listening to you. Hello, Abraham. Okay, I think Abraham is not. Alex. Alex, you can unmute yourself to ask a question. Thanks. 
Hello, Alex. Kennedy, you can unmute yourself to ask your question. Gifty, you can also unmute yourself to ask the question. Mm. Right. 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 Mm. I can I can hear the speaker. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, I want to thank you for the nice presentation. I'm gifted. And I, please, I want to find out that anything. How many days does it take for you to get them? Oh, if there is no problem with it, within 50 minutes, you should get your report. Uh, so if there's no problem. So if there's a problem, that's why it takes <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's been some challenge, um, I think, for about two to three weeks now. Okay. That I know, I've spoken to the administrator. Uh, in fact, the file that we are using, I submitted it long ago. The report was not coming, so I left it. But you can see from their highlight that there's good maintenance work. So we are hoping that. He said, if there's no problem with it, it comes within. Then my other question is if your literature review for the project work uh will it would they consider it as you plagiarized what the literature review yes your no of course if you if you if you quoted and you didn't cite so in your literature review you should cite yeah. so when the you authors cite, you oh, quoted you're okay okay Is that, oh. i didn't get that place I'm saying that if you are able to you cite everybody, then you are okay with that. Of course, of course, of course. So in the essence, all the academic um, community is asking that you 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 quote, you cite, you quote, you cite, and then when you finish, give us a reference list. That is all. all right. And then also don't fetch. So if you want to quote your lecturer, don't go and fetch a whole paragraph. All right. Once you do that, what it means is that you finish the work. And then a bigger percentage of the work is made up of according to in the view of as postulated by, okay, as noted by, noted that according to, all right, we don't want that. So we are saying that 20% of the work should be made up of that. So once you stay away from that, you are fine. Thank you. Next question, please. Hello. Hello. Hey. Um, please. I'm trying to follow what you are doing on Sakai for the turn it in. But if I click on my research commons, it's already giving me, and I go to the assignment side. It's giving uh -huh. me some. Uh, the, for the plagiarism check, I said plagiarism check at March. And then there's something there like due date, March 20, 2021. So when I click on the check, I say that. The time has passed. I can't submit. I don't know. There's not supposed to be assignments, right? No, I'm not getting it. So are you where I am now? L look at the screen. Yes. Yes, but my what then, so you, appearing on my screen. Describe from the screen. Your your screen is different from mine. Yes. yes. Okay, so I submit my work. Oh. I, are you here? A psychology yes. check, check this page as well. Are you here? Hello. Yes. Look at my page. Is your page like what I am on now? They should close at five. Mm. Hello. Yes, please. It's the same. Uh, you said yes. Yes. Plagiarism checker. All right. And yes. the date here is it the same? March twenty twenty one. Yeah, so in that case, you click on plagiarism. You click on click on checker like this. Okay. And then to open this interface, once it opens, scroll down to the bottom. You should see browse. You see browse. Oh, that is the issue. Yeah. So I think you see. I also cannot see browse. I can't see you remove. So I am taking it as part of the challenge. So you can. See 
see up here, they say they are going to have a maintenance today, all right, at 4 p.m. So let's hope that once that is done, the problem will be solved, okay? All right. All right. Next Hello. person, please. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much for this wonderful presentation. Uh, sir. Uh, Welcome, sir. Uh, please, if I need further tuition on the reference management tool, can I come to your place personally? The uh, reference management tool, which is the software. Yes, yes. Uh, the mainly, I have to set up the mainly uh, reference something so that I, I can do the uh, reference. We are, we are going to do that next two weeks. Okay. So, so um, Grassack has, uh, I think, about four sessions for you. This is the first one. Next week, we have another one. And then the third one will be Mendeley. So, we, I, will, I beg that you hold on till then. All right. Okay. Then the Thank second you. question is, wow. uh, uh, in the course of um, doing the referencing, um, if you uh -huh. do paraphrasing, it, it, you, uh, you are suggesting that it's not good to do paraphrasing. Are you suggesting that it's not a good thing to do in the, your write-up, paraphrasing? That, that is not good to paraphrase? Yes. When no, paraphrase. I, didn't, I didn't say you shouldn't paraphrase. I'm saying that you should paraphrase fully. Fully? Yes. You know, some people, they pick, they pick the author's work and then they change some words. Okay. That is what I'm saying is not acceptable. That's part writing. It's not acceptable. So if you paraphr paraphrasing means that you are writing what the author wrote in your own words. Okay. But some, some people, instead of writing everything in your own words, except technical terms, they will kind of take the author's word. And like the example I showed you on the Tenetine report. Yes. So we put some words here and where that no, we're not in there. So instead of paraphrasing fully, then they leave some and then that's what I mean. Okay, so when you paraphrase, okay, in that situation, you don't need to uh, reference. When you, you need to, I still need to reference. Yes, you need to. Okay, all right. Exactly. The, the, so, 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 in the academic term, when you say be honest, the honesty part here is that, here is that you, hello, can we please mute our mic if you are not talking? Let's mute when we are not talking. Moderator, can you meet everybody so I can? Okay, so um, the honesty part here, the reason why you should paraphrase is that, let's say you pick a colleague for my student's thesis. You have written and, and, and then you look at his work and something that he said, you say in your own words. Remember that you couldn't have come to that construction if not for his work. Okay. And everything you have said, all right? So if I say, if for instance, I am saying that, um, graduate students of the uh, University of Ghana in 2021 were more prone to acquiring information resource skills for their research work. Okay. And another person also says that, um, and you say in your own words, the what I have just said, in your own words, you say that graduate students of, it's been proven that graduate students now receive enough tutelage, all right, in, re, in um, information literacy in order to complete their project work. A Marvel 2021. You have just said what I said, only you said it in a different way. Did you get it? So you need to give me my credit because if not for what I wrote, you wouldn't have been able to come to that conclusion. That, that's basically what it means. Great. Well understood. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Hello. sir. Thank you, sir. Next person, please. Yes, sir, please. Um, my question is that, let's say you want to find the original source of something you have read in another article but you realize that yeah you, you don't have access to the full article you just have um the abstract uh, meanwhile you really like that idea yeah. in so um in that case what do you do do you abandon the idea or and um you know we have been encouraged okay so first of all Yes. yes. Please, if you are not speaking mute, please. Okay, so first of all, the, the, the source or the, the interface from which you are searching from, 
if you are not getting the full article as we did with the off campus be sure you are signed in be sure your internet connection is stable from my own experience i've realized that even when the internet is not stable even when you are signing it will still be asking you to sign in in which case you will not get the full content so be sure you have good source of internet then you know that of course you are not getting access two if you are searching it from a source that the university is not subscribing to that may happen all right in mm -hmm. which case if you are sure that we don't have it then apply to get it using the article request okay and then three you can also go to google scholar so in google scholar what you do for instance is that when you get the copy the title you'll be surprised how the things you can get in scholar so if i get to scholar.google.com okay so copy the title of the material you want and then search with it mm -hmm. you may probably get it from there okay so first of all check your internet and be sure you are connected if you are connected properly be sure that um you have signed in via off campus if you are using the university's internet okay and then you can also search through google scholar use the title uh, search okay so if i had some article readily i would have uh, tried it okay so please do that and let's let's we have spent too much time already so when we get to mendeley i will show you some of those things yes, next next question please hello uh, hello hello Please, can you hear me? Yes, yes. sir. Please, I want to ask. Can yeah. I hear you? Aha, uh -huh. please. The, yeah, please. The, the software, uh, you said 24%. 24% of what? Is it 24% of uh, not 80 20 pages? Or... It's not 24. Please. Hello? No, no, yes. It's I not mean, 24, it's 20 yeah, hello. I'm here, I'm here. Yes, please. Yes, please. You say Eugene is 20%. Yes, yeah, so the 20% yes. of what? 20% of what? Of the uh, total content. It, so let's. Of the total content of, of, of your, your project work or your thesis. Of your thesis. Okay, okay. All right, okay, I get it. So we are saying that the quote okay. works, the quotations, the quotations in your work yes. should only okay. amount to 20% of the whole work. That's what it means. Yeah. All right, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But I hope next um, person, please. Yes. Next person, please. Mr. Madrid, are we are we done? Okay, so I think all hands are down. Um, Mr. Morfo, it appears. So I like to thank question. you. There's no question. There is no question. There's no question. Thank you so much. So um, thank you all for your attention. And uh, I hope that you apply the skills to help you finish your work on time. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. Moderator, Madam Moderator. Thank you very much, Mr. Mwaho, for such an educative session. It's been a long day, and you are grateful for your time and everything. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fellow graduate yeah. students, we appreciate your participation and we look forward to having you in our next session. Nice day to all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, hello, please. How do we get the recording? Please, the recordings will be made available after we are done with all four sections so that we put it in a package and then send it on our various platforms on WhatsApp and also by email. So please kindly bear with us. Thank you. Oh, my mom is calling. Oh. Hello, my bachelor. Mr. Frost is here.